the Super Delicious Cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and ability far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, defender of law and order, champion of equal rights, valiant, courageous fighter against the forces of hate and prejudice. Today we begin a brand new adventure for the Man of Steel, an adventure that is jam-packed with suspense and mystery. We'll learn more about it in a moment. But right now, I see that Dan McCullough is waiting to talk to you. Go ahead, Dan. You know, gang, I never saw anything like the way you fellows and girls are going all out for that new second series of comic buttons Kellogg's Pep is putting out. Why, all the kids in our block are planning how they're going to pin these buttons in the new second series on their jacket or dress or cap. And the kids in the schoolyard and over at the playground are plenty busy, too, showing off the buttons they've collected so far and swapping duplicates each other. And no wonder, because in the first place, these new pep comic buttons are doggone slick-looking. Full comic strip colors on a clear white background. Why, the pictures of your funny sheet favorites really stand out. And each one of those pictures is really true to life, straight from the funny papers. There's a Maggie and Jigs and, and Popeye and Superman, of course. And you'll want to collect all 18 of these new buttons. You can, too. Pure, easy as can be. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. You just ask Mom to get you some of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep, and look for your prize inside the package. There's a comic button, a prize for you, in every package of P-E-P, Pep, the sunshine cereal, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek and Omaha. No, the adventures of Superman. At 10 o'clock at night, very much excited, Editor Perry White phoned Clark Kent, telling him to pick up Lois Lane and come to his suburban home at once. He urged Kent to be extremely careful, said it was a matter of life or death, and then hung up. Mystified, Kent drove to Lois's apartment house, where Morrissey, the doorman, said Lois was waiting for him. But the girl reporter failed to answer the switchboard phone, and Kent and Morrissey went up to her apartment. They found the door unlocked and the apartment looking as though a cyclone had struck it. The rug was shoved into a corner. Tables and lamps were overturned. And Lois was missing. Listen. Someone got in here, overpowered Miss Lane, and took her away, Morrissey. Oh, Mother of Mercy, who'd want to be doing that? I don't know. Did anyone else go up to her apartment this evening? Uh, uh, no, sir. I was on the door all evening. You know, we don't let strangers in unless we announce them to the tenant first. Well, then whoever it was must have come up the fire escape at the rear of the building. Miss Lane was carried out that way, too. Oh, oh blessed saints. Look, you say she called you on the house phone a little while ago? And not more than 15 or 20 minutes ago it was, Mr. Kent. Well, didn't any of the other tenants on this floor complain about the noise in this apartment? No, sir, nobody complained. Not a soul. That's strange. I don't understand it. Miss Lane is such a fine young lady. Who'd want to be harming her now? I don't know, Morrissey. Maybe Mr. White does. Look, I'll tell you what you do, uh, Morrissey. You question the tenants on both sides of this apartment and across the hall. Find out if they heard anything. I'll phone Mr. White. Uh, had we, hadn't we better be calling the police? No, not yet. Mr. White may be able to give me a lead. Now, the police. No, I want Brentwood 6242. Brentwood 6242? Yes, and hurry it, please. It's very urgent. Get going, Marcy. Well, okay, okay. Hello? Is that you, Chief? Yeah. Who's this? Clark Kent. Listen, Chief, I want to have... you wake me up at this hour of the night? Waking you up? I thought you were waiting. Oh, well, never mind. Look, Chief, uh, something's happened. What do you mean? I'm afraid something's happened to Lois. To Lois? Yes. What? What, what happened? Tell me. Well, I stopped at her apartment to pick her up as you told me to. I told and... you to. Well, of course, don't you remember? I told you to pick her up? On the telephone, not more than half an hour ago. I was asleep half an hour ago. All right, all right. Call it 40 minutes. I was asleep at 9 o'clock. It's almost 10.30 now. What? What's this about Lois? Uh, what happened to her? Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me you didn't phone me this evening and tell me to pick Lois up and get her out to your house as soon as possible? Of course I didn't. I didn't call anyone. I was in bed at 9 o'clock. Well, then someone impersonated you. Impersonated me? Apparently. Someone who imitated your voice perfectly phoned me told me to pick up Lois and get out to your house as quickly as possible. I came to Lois's apartment, found it all ripped up as if a terrific battle had taken place, and Lois missing. What? Yes. Maybe you'd better get over here right away, Chief. Now where are you? At Lois's apartment. Or what's left of it. Did you call Inspector Henderson? No, not yet. I, I thought maybe... Never mind that... what you thought. Call him at once. I'll be there in half an hour. Okay. Gosh, I, I can't understand Mr. this. Mr. Kent. Oh, yes, Morrissey. Did you find out anything? No, sir. I spoke to Mr. and Mrs. Seaman on this side and to Dr. Lewis across the hall. Yes. They were home all evening, and they said they didn't hear no sound of fighting. 
They heard nothing? No, sir. But the walls and the floors in this building are very thick, you know. Well, just the same. Someone should have heard something. Did you, did you call the police yet? I'm calling Inspector Henderson now. Something very strange about all this, Morrissey. Why should anyone impersonate Mr. White in order to get me over? Puzzled and anxious, Kent calls Inspector Henderson, who hurries to Lois's apartment. Joined by Perry White, the three men search throughout the night for some clue to Lois's mysterious disappearance. But without success. Early the next morning, Jimmy Olsen and Perry White are in the latter's office at the Daily Planet. Oh, why doesn't Henderson call? What kind of a police department is he running? Take it easy, Chief. I'm sure Henderson's doing all he can. He's not doing enough. He should have found Lois by now. Gosh, I, I hope she's all right. But I'm now, afraid... Don't you start blubbering, Jim. But Miss Lane's been gone almost 12 hours. No, I know, and there's not a single clue as to... I've got it. Let me. I've got it. Hello, Mr. White's office. Is that you, Clark? Lois, is it you? Lois, 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 Please, Chief, Jim, be quiet. I can't hear her. Are you all right, Lois? Of course I'm all right. Is the chief there? Well, yes, but what happened to you? Where are you? I'm at 407 Clover Street. 407 Clover Street? Write that down, Lois. Yes, now look. Clark, tell the chief I need $10,000 in cash at once. Ten thousand dollars? You mean you're being held for ransom? Held no, for ransom? No, Quick, Olsen, call Inspector Henderson. No, okay. Oh, golly. It's a terrific story, and I need ten thousand. Just a minute, Lois. Uh, come back, Jim. She's all right. She is. Yes. But Mr. White just said... Never mind what I said. Well, what's going on? Oh, I'm getting that list. Wait a minute, please, will you? Come on. Okay, Lois, I'm sorry to interrupt you. We've been terribly worried, though. What happened to you last night? Nothing happened to me. Now, listen for a but minute. But your apartment, you? it was all ripped up. Look, if you don't stop interrupting me, I will scream. But, but I, I, I... Oh, all right, all right. What were you saying? I said, tell the chief that I'm working on the story of the century. It'll make Jimmy's trip to the moon look like two cents. But I need $10,000 in cash at once. What for? Well, for, the, for the story, stupid. Tell the chief and hurry. Okay, hold on. Uh, Lois says she's on a terrific story and needs $10,000 in cash. $10,000? What for? For the, for the story, stupid. What? I'm quoting Lois. That's what she told me. Tell her no. Tell, no story is worth that much money. I heard that, Clark. Now tell the chief this story will scoop the world. But if he wants to be a piker, I know the Daily Blade will be glad to pay twice ten thousand for it. And I heard that. Tell her she can go jump in the... Uh, no, 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 don't tell her that. No, no, I'm not buying any ten thousand dollar pig in the poke. Tell her to stay where she is. I'll be right down with the money, but she'll have to show me before I pay. Did you hear that, Lois? Yes, I heard it, but tell him to hurry, Clark. Every minute counts. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. 407 Clover Street. Is that right? Right. Now, wait, Chief. I'll go with no, you. No, no, you stay here, Kent. But I, I want... This story is all Lois says it is. I want you to be here to take it over the phone. Yes, I know, but... Well, uh, uh, wait fine. a minute. Mr. Kent. I know. Mr. White doesn't call pretty soon. We'll miss the noon edition. Well, Clover Street's a good hour's ride from here, Jim. He's been gone an hour and a half. Gosh, I wonder what this big story of Miss Lane's is. Uh-oh. Maybe we'll find out now. Hello, Kent speaking. Kent, listen to me. Got the story, Chief? No, no, I haven't got it yet. I need another $10,000. What? You heard me. Tell Darwin to draw 10000 from the bank at once and you rush it down here. Are you serious? You bet I'm serious. Get that money and rush it down here. We're at 407 Clover Street, Mrs. Walsh's rooming house. You got that? Yes, I've got it, but Chief, what's in the world? I can't anymore. I'm being watched. What? So long. Oh, wait a minute. Who oh, was that, Mr. White? Yes. He says he needs another $10,000. Sleeping lizards. I can't figure this out, Jim. Well, who are you calling on the intercom? Darwin, the cashier. Oh. Yes, Mr. White. Oh, this is Clark Kent, Darwin. Mr. White just called. He wants you to draw $10,000 from the bank at once. Another $10,000? That's right. Take care of it right away, will you? But, but this is most unusual, Mr. I don't know. Editorial, I guess. Oh, you guess? You can straighten it out with Mr. White later. But I can't draw a large sum like that, Mr. Kent, without knowing which account is to be charged to. Now listen, Darwin. The chief says this is very important. I'm sorry, Mr. Kent, but you must understand my position. Well... I'm answerable to our stockholders and the publishers. I know. I can't I... possibly issue a voucher for $10,000 without knowing which account is to be charged to. Well, now, wait a minute. final. What will Clark Kent do now? Harry White said every moment is precious. We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. But first, here again is your announcer. You know, it seems like there are more reasons than you can shake a stick at why you fellows and girls go all out for Kellogg's Pep. First off, there's the doggone good eating in that sunny golden toasted cereal. The spoonful after spoonful of crispy freshness and real wide awake flavor. Then there's the sound nourishment in Kellogg's Pep. More than twice as much of an energy vitamin B1 as in sun-ripened whole wheat. Plus, your whole daily minimum need of vitamin D. And that D vitamin is the sunshine vitamin. Helps build strong bones and teeth in growing youngsters like you. And, of course, there are the swell prizes you get. A comic button in every package of pep. 
18 different pictures of your favorite funny paper characters done up in brilliant red and yellow and blue and black. Mighty snappy looking and so easy to get. You don't have to send in any money, not even a box stop. Fact is, you can't buy these comic buttons anywhere. You get them the easy way by asking Mom to keep you supplied with plenty of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. There's a bright colored comic button in every package. Just ask Mom for P E P Pep, the sunshine cereal made by Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. <laughs> Mr. Darwin, the Daily Planet's cashier, has refused to give Clark Kent $10,000 to bring to Perry White. In his office, Kent says to Jimmy Olsen... We're in a spot, Jim. Darwin won't draw the money without a direct order from Mr. White. And according to the chief, every moment is precious. Well, Jeepers, what do we do? Well, I guess it's only one thing to do. The chief will have to call Darwin. Look, you go into the city room, call information, and get the phone number for Mrs. Walsh's rooming house... At 407 Clover Street. Uh Uh-huh. I want to keep my line open in case Mr. White calls back. This is Walsh's rooming house, 407 Clover. Right. Hurry it up, will you, Jim? As fast as I can. Good. I better warn Darwin to stand by, I guess. Now, see here, Mr. Kent, there's no use arguing. Now, wait a minute. I'm giving you my decision, and that's fine. Keep your shirt on, Darwin. I just wanted to tell you that... Your reporters are all the same. You don't seem to realize that a newspaper is a business organization. I realize it. I only... We should have watched it for $10,000. Now, look. $10,000, mind you. And not even knowing which account is being charged for. Will you listen a minute? I'm going to have Mr. White phone you right away. This happens to be very important, so please don't leave until he phones. Oh, I certainly won't. I'm glad you see it my way, Mr. Kent. Well... It's these little details which are so important. Yeah, sure, know. sure, sure. See you in a few minutes, Darwin. Oh, all right, Mr. Kent. Well, he writes himself a voucher every time he buys a stick of gum. Oh, there you are, Jim. This gets worse and worse by the minute, Mr. Kent. What does? Did you get the phone number? Well, that's just the trouble. There is no phone number. There is no... What are you talking about? Information says there's no phone for Mrs. Walsh's rooming house at 407 Clover Street. No phone? Great God. His jaw dropping, Clark Kent stares at Jimmy Olsen in amazement. Only a few minutes ago, Perry White said he was calling from that address and that he and Lois Lane were in danger. What does this mean? What is the story in which White and Lois are involved? And what is the meaning of the other strange things which are baffling Kent? Well, fellows and girls, there are more and even stranger things to come. So don't miss a single episode of our fascinating new story. Tune in tomorrow and every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, and follow The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman DC Publications. Say, gang, you know what fun it is to make your dog sit up and beg for something good to eat? Well, if you want to make sure your dog gets a good dinner that'll help keep him strong and husky, ask your mother to give him Kellogg's Grow Pup Dog Food. If you feed Grow Pup to your dog, along with his scraps of meat and fat, he ought to get along just fine. That kind of eating will help give him strong bones and teeth and muscles. There's Grow Pup Ribbon, Grow Pup Meal, and Grow Pup Pellets. Just see which your dog likes best, and ask mother to feed it to him regularly. Remember, that's Kellogg's Grow Pup. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Kellogg's Pep, the super delicious cereal, presents the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from another planet, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, defender of law and order, champion of equal rights, valiant, courageous fighter against the forces of hate and prejudice. Today, what Lois Lane calls the story of the century has Clark Kent very much baffled. We'll learn what develops in just a moment, but right now... Let's hear from our good friend, Dan McCullough. You know, gang, one of the swell things about this new second series of comic buttons Kellogg's Pep is putting out 
is you've got a new set of friends to watch for when Mom opens a new package of pet. They're all characters you've been following in the funny papers for ages. So, when you get a button with a picture of Lord Plushbottom on it, well, you certainly don't need, it, need to be introduced. Same way with olive oil or, or Uncle Willie or Superman or any of the 18 different buttons in this new second series. And is it exciting fun to swap duplicates with your friends and to wear these smart-looking buttons on your jacket or your dress or cap? They're so colorful and bright, they're really on the beam. The background is enameled clear white with the pictures done up in brilliant red and blue and, and yellow and black, so they really show up. And you know, the best part is, you don't have to send in a single penny to get these keen-looking buttons. Not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. They come only as prizes in packages of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. So don't forget to ask Mom to get you a good supply of Pep and look for your prize inside the package. That's P-E-P, Pep, the sunshine cereal made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, the adventures of Superman. In response to an urgent telephone call from editor Perry White, a call which White later denied making, Clark Kent hurried to Lois Lane's apartment, only to find it a shambles. Furniture overturned, rugs in a heap, drawers pulled out, and the girl reporter mysteriously missing. Worried and puzzled, Kent contacted police inspector Henderson, and then, as Superman, spent a fruitless night searching for Lois. The following morning at the office of the Daily Planet, White, Kent, and Jimmy Olsen were together when a telephone call came in from Lois. She was on the trail of a terrific story, she said, and needed $10,000 immediately. Could Perry White bring it to 407 Clover Street? Leaving Kent at the office, White set out with $10,000 in cash. Later than an, Less than an hour later, he called in telling Kent to bring $10,000 more to the same address. Kent has asked Jimmy to call information and get the number of the telephone at 407 Clover Street. And as we continue now, Jimmy has just returned with some startling news. Listen getting worse and worse by the minute, Mr. Kent. Well, never mind that, Jim. What's the phone number? Oh, that's just the trouble. There is no phone number. What are you talking about? Information says there's no phone for Mrs. Walsh at 407 Culver Street. Oh, that's ridiculous. Are you sure you got the address right? Oh, I'm positive. I marked it down on this slip of paper. Look, 407 Culver Street. Well, she said there's no phone at all at 407 Culver Street. Something's going on here, Jim. Something I don't like. I don't like it either. Well, what do you think we ought to do? Well, it's a cinch Darwin won't give me that money until the chief tells him how to draw it. And since we can't get in touch with 407 Clover Street by phone, I'm going down there. I'll go with you. No, no, no. You stay right here and stand by in case either Lois or the chief calls on that story. You sit right here in my office and tell Miss Backrack if either of them do call to put it through to you. Okay, but be careful, Mr. Cannon. Don't worry. Hurrying through the Daily Planet City Room, alive with the clatter of typewriters and teletype machines, Kent steps into the storeroom, closes the door behind him, and in a few brief seconds has made the transformation from the mild-mannered, bespectacled reporter to the red-caped, blue-costumed figure of Superman. Raising the window, he leaps out, swoops high above the building. And a minute or so later, once more in the guise of Clark Kent, is ringing the bell of an old, weather-beaten shingle house at 407 Clover Street. Must be the place. There's a sign in the window, and it looks like a typical rooming house. Oh, someone's coming. Good morning. Lovely morning, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, I'm... It is spring and all the world is new with light. And all the things that breathe are new with wondrous living. Oh, that's nice. Ah, yes, what is so sweet as a day in spring. Then uh, I ever... beg your pardon. My name is Clark Kent. A very lovely name. A very musical name. Oh, you think so? Clark Kent. Clark. Uh, uh, ah, are you Mrs. Walt? Oh, you've heard of me. But of course, I can see by your eyes that you're a lover of the drama. You can? Uh, did you see me in the death? Or in the taming of the shoes? Uh, Mrs. Walsh, I'm from the Daily Planet. Mr. Perry White told yes, me... Yes, to... yes, do come in. Thank you. Uh, step right into the living room, Mr. Kent. Very well. Thank you. Uh, Mr. White and Miss Lane stepped out for a few moments. They should be back very shortly. Uh, just make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Uh, perhaps you'd like to look over this book of my press clippings. Uh, well, uh, Ah, I... those were the grand and glorious days when the name of Lenora Walsh glittered in a thousand lights. Oh. Uh, that, Mr. Kent, was the golden era of the theater. Ah, look, a picture of me playing the role of Ophelia in Shakespeare's immortal Hamlet. Hmm? Where? It was at the Civic Opera House in Paducah, and I was sensational, simply sensational. Uh, very interesting, very interesting. Uh, how long did Mr. White and Miss Lane say they'd be? And here, now look here. Uh, oh, oh, uh, they'll be back shortly. They better be, or I'm going to start raising the roof. Tut, tut, Mr. Kent. 
In the words of the immortal bard, the quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as a gentle rain. What's that? Heavens alive, Mr. Kent. Don't jump so. It's just the telephone. But, but you're not supposed to have a telephone. How would I operate a theatrical rooming house without a telephone? Well, uh, I... I keep it in that little closet. But when I... Excuse me while I answer it. I don't get this. I don't get it at all. Hello? Mrs. Walt? Yes. This is Perry White. Is Mr. Kent there? Uh, why, yes, Mr. White. Uh, put him on, would you please? Uh, certainly. It's for you, Mr. Kent. Mr. White. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, Chief. Have you got the money, Kent? Why, uh, no, you see, I... Great can... snakes and little fishes. I told you I wanted $10,000. I know, I know, Chief, but Darwin wouldn't give it to me. Why not? No, he said he didn't know which account to draw it on. And... Oh, Paul, the stupid, addle painted hair-brained nincompoops I ever met, he takes the cake. Yes, I know. Now, listen I... to me, Kent. I'll call Darwin immediately. Good. You get back to the office and pick up the money. What? You should have it ready by the time you get there. Well, what'll I do with it? What do you think? Bring it back to Mrs. Walsh's house. Chief, what's this all about? I can't tell you now, but it's the biggest story of the century. Well, can't you even give me no, an... No, I've got to go. Get back to the office, Kent. Hurry. Wait, wait a minute. Hello. Hello. Oh, he hung up. My, but Mr. White sounded excited, didn't he? Yeah, yes, he did. I, I'll have to leave now. Oh, Walsh. I'm terribly sorry. No, don't you bother about the door. I'll, I'll find my way out. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Kent. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Story of the century, but he can't tell me about it. Oh, well, no sense beating my brains out. Back into that alley to switch to Superman. No sense wasting time getting to the office. Now, oh, the coast looks clear. Off with these clothes. Story of the century, eh? What could it be? I certainly don't know. Well, all set. Up! Up! And away! <laughs> Hi, Clark. Hi, Joe. Hey, wait, I wanted to ask you. Oh, not now, Joe. Jimmy's waiting for me in my office. Hi, Jim. Hi, Mr. Kent. Well? Mr. White called Mr. Darwin and told him to go down to the bank and get the $10,000. Yes, I know that. Well, did you see Mr. White or Miss Lane? No, I saw Mrs. Walsh and listened to her spout Shakespeare for ten minutes. Well, what is she, an actress? She was an actress about a hundred years ago. Oh, boy, that must have been something. Huh. Well, how come all this stuff is going on at her place? Gosh, you've got me, Jim. I can't make head or tail out of it. White says it's the story of the century. Lois says it's the story of the century. And here I am, I'm going to merry-go-round. Boy, it sure is a mystery. Yeah. I've never seen the mystery yet that can't be solved. I'll take it. Hello, Clark Kent speaking. Clark, this is Lois. Well, Lois? Is it all Lois? Lois Lane? Yes. Lois, where are you? I can't tell you, but did that money go down to 407 Clover Street? Now, look, Lois, I'm getting sick and Clark, tired of being... Clark, I have much time, and they're watching me like hawks. Who's watching you? Just answer my question. Did the money go down to Clover Street, the second no, 10000 Not yet. Well, for heaven's sake, Clark, please see that it does. Lois, can't you tell I me what this... I can't tell you anything. Uh-oh, I've got to go now. No, Here wait a minute. Come. Goodbye. Hello, Lois. Lois. What happened? Oh, she hung up. What did she say? Did she say what it was all about? Not a word. She did say someone was watching her like a hawk. No, who's that now? Come in. What? Greetings, gentlemen. What? Leaves. Lois. Great Scott, Lois Lane. Stunned, Clark Kent and Jimmy Olsen stare in open-mouthed amazement as Lois Lane, smiling and seemingly oblivious to all the mystery surrounding her, enters Kent's office. What is the answer? We'll know more in just a moment. But first, here again is your announcer. You know, gang, to you young fellows, 40 years must seem like a lifetime. But when it's a lifetime of doing good, well, that's something to be mighty proud of. That's why the Boys Clubs of America have something they can really boast about this week. Because it's their 40th anniversary. Yes, sir, for that long, this grand organization has been building boys into better men. Helping young fellows to learn good sportsmanship. To build up their bodies through planned recreation. To learn new skills and trades. In the war, the boys' clubs sold war bonds. Collected much-needed waste paper and metal. Planted gardens and helped farmers. And now, they're carrying on by learning the ideals of fair play, tolerance and honesty and the satisfaction of real useful service. Here's congratulations to the Boys Clubs of America on its 40th birthday. Just keep up the good work. Now, back to Superman. Less than 60 seconds after Clark Kent in his office with Jimmy Olsen received an urgent telephone call from Lois Lane, the door to the office opened, and in stepped the girl reporter, big as life. As we continue now, she has closed the door behind her, 
and faces Kent and Jimmy, who are staring at her in open-mouthed amazement. What on earth is the matter with you two? Do I look like a ghost? Sleeps uh, a ghost. Stop looking at me like that. Clark, snap out of it. Lois, is it really you? Who do you think it is? What is the matter with you? I, I just talked to you on the telephone. I just hung up. You just talked to me on the telephone? Yes, just a minute ago. You you asked me about the second $10,000. What I, second $10,000? Eat the lizards. Oh, no, no, wait. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's start from the beginning. Well, we certainly better start from someplace because I'm getting a little confused. You're getting confused. You're getting confused. Well, you don't have to leer at me. All right, me. all right, wait. Now, wait a minute. What about your apartment? Who smashed it up? Who overturned the furniture? Who pulled out the drawers? I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Where were you last night? I was with my sister, Diana. She's sick. You were not? I was, too. I called your sister. There was no answer. I'm sorry, Clark, but I spent the entire night with Diana and neither one of us burst. I tell you... Okay, okay, let that go. Now, about the $10,000, the second $10,000. Didn't I just talk to you on the phone, and didn't you tell me to get the money down to 407 Clover Street, Mrs. Walsh's rooming house, immediately? Clark, are you crazy? I don't know, Lois. Am I? Well, it certainly looks like someone is crazy. What can possibly be behind this strange and puzzling mystery? Gang, it gets stranger and more puzzling as it goes along. So don't miss a single solitary word of it. In another day or two, you'll be on a merry-go-round, just as Clark Kent is. So keep listening. Tune in tomorrow, same time, same station, for the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Nelson and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday. Same time, same station. By the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman D.C. publication. Say, lots of you kids have dogs, and I'll bet one of the things they enjoy most is a tug of war. Yes, dogs seem to get such a kick out of using their strong teeth and muscles. Now, if you want to help keep your dog strong and husky, feed him Grow Pup dog food. It's just wonderful for dogs and has a good meaty flavor most dogs like. There are three different kinds. There's Grow Pup Ribbon, Grow Pup Meal, and Grow Pup Pellets. Ask your mother to get Kellogg's Grow Pup today and see if your dog doesn't gobble it right up. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Kellogg's Pep! The Super Delicious Cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, defender of law and order... Champion of equal rights. Valiant, courageous fighter against the forces of hate and prejudice. Today, the mystery surrounding the story of the century has Clark Kent completely baffled. We'll join him in a moment as he tries to untangle the thread. But right now, let's join another friend, Dan McCullough. You know, uh, when you wake up in the morning and see the good golden sunshine streaming through your window, well, you've got a head start on a happy day right then and there. And when you come to the breakfast table and see your heaping bowl full of sunny, golden, toasted Kellogg's Pep, why, you're pretty sure to feel even more cheerful because Pep tastes a doggone good. It's crisp and tender and full of that wide-awake flavor, not to mention the good whole-grain nutrition in every serving, plus more than twice as much vitamin D1 as in sun-ripened whole wheat, plus your whole daily minimum need of sunshine vitamin D, plus the exciting prizes in every package of Kellogg's Pep. Yes, sir, comic buttons, a brand new second series of true-to-life pictures of your favorite funny paper characters. Boy, what a load of fun it is to collect the whole second series and trade duplicates with your pals. And how easy these comic buttons are to get. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. 
and you can't buy them anywhere. All you do is to make sure Mom gets you some of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And there's your prize inside the package. Remember, that's P-E-P, Pep, the sunshine cereal made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, the adventures of Superman. At the moment, Clark Kent feels as if he were on a merry-go-round as he attempts to solve the most baffling mystery of his entire career. The latest incredible development was the sudden appearance of Lois Lane in Kent's office at the Daily Planet hardly a second after she had finished speaking to him on the telephone, presumably from the other end of Metropolis. As we continue now, determined to get an answer to the amazing enigma, Kent, after warning Jimmy Olsen not to say a word, begins questioning Lois. Now, let's take one thing at a time, Lois. First, who smashed up your apartment last night? Who what? Who overturned the furniture, smashed the lamps, and pulled out all the drawers? I don't know what you're talking about, what? Clark. Please. All right, all right, all right. Where were you last night? With my sister, Diane. You were not? I was, I too. called your sister's apartment. Nobody answered. I'm sorry, but I spent the entire night with Diana. She's sick, and neither one of us bugs. Please. Okay, okay, let that go. Now, about the $10,000, the second $10,000. What? Didn't I just talk to you on the phone, and didn't you tell me to get the money down to 407 Clover Street, Mrs. Walsh's rooming house, immediately? Clark, are you crazy? Answer my question. Who's Mrs. Walsh? Gleeps. Oh, stop saying Gleeps, Jim. But, but, but Gleeps, she just I said... I know what she said. Keep quiet, please. I'm going to get to the bottom of this if it's the last thing I do. Now, look, Lois. Let's go back a step. To the first $10,000. What I... first $10,000? That you phoned for earlier this morning, a couple of hours ago. I phoned for $10,000? Well, you know you did. You said you were working on a terrific story and you needed $10,000 in cash immediately. Why, of all the... Clark, have you gone crazy? What's come over you? I mean, you... You didn't call? Not even the first time? I didn't call the first time or the second time or any other time and ask for $10,000. As a matter of fact, I haven't used a telephone since I left the office yesterday. I've been taking care of Diana. Creeps. Oh, will you please tell me what this is all about, Clark? I'm beginning to get a vague idea, but it doesn't add up. Apparently, someone impersonated you, too. What do you mean, me, too? Someone impersonated the chief last night. What? Yes, last night about 10 o'clock, I got a phone call. I was sure it was White. Same voice, inflections, everything. He told me to pick you up at your apartment, come to his house at once. He said something big was going on and dangerous, and he warned me to be very careful. Yes? Well, I got my car and drove to your place. When you didn't answer the switchboard phone, the doorman and I went up to your apartment. The door was unlocked, and the place looked as if a cyclone had struck it. The rug was heaped up, the furniture overturned, all the drawers pulled out. Good heavens, I thought you were joking about the apartment. Listen, that apartment's no joke, it's a mess. What was stolen? Oh, nothing. As far as I could see, all your clothes were there, your jewelry hadn't been touched, nothing oh. seemed to be missing. I don't understand no, it. Well, neither do we. I can't explain why they made a wreck of your apartment, Lois, but I think I know why someone impersonated your voice. Why? To swindle the Daily Planet out of $10,000. I mean, $20,000. They... T Great Scott. What is it, Clark? The chief. He took $10,000 in cash to that rooming house this morning when he thought it was you who phoned for it. The crooks must have been waiting for well, it. Leaping Lewis. Lewis. Heavens. Either they forced him to call me a little while ago and demand another 10000 or whoever impersonated him last night called. Either way, he's in trouble. I've got to get down there at once. I'll call you as soon as I can. Wait a minute, I'm going with you. Oh, yeah, me too. Going. I can get there faster alone. Don't be ridiculous. A taxi can carry two passengers as quickly as one. They can carry three, too. Well, I, You're I, not I, telling I, me anything, Clark. I, I'm going with you, and that is that. Oh, well, all right, all right, come along. No, no, not you, Jim. But I... Someone has to stay here in case we have to call in. Oh, gee whiz. Come on, Lois. Hey, wait, your phone's ringing. Take the message. I can't wait. Okay. Hello? James Olsen speaking. Uh, Mary White, Jim. Is Kent oh, there? Mr. Kent, come back. It's Mr. White. Who? Mr. White, the chief. Thanks, Tim. Close the door, Lois. Uh, wake up, Olson. I want Kent. Is he here? He's right here, Chief. I mean, Mr. White. Now, listen, are you are you okay? Oh, of course I'm okay. Stop wasting time and put Kent well, Give me the phone, Chief. Give it to me. Clark, wait a minute. It, it, it might not be the Chief. It, it might be... leave it to me, Lois. Leave it to me. Uh, hello, Chief. Kent, what in tarnation? I have to put money down. Uh, I was delayed. The, the, the cashier wouldn't issue a draft without an order from you. I called that lizard idiot Darwin a half hour ago and told him to draw the money from the bank and give it to you. You mean say he hasn't done it yet? Well, it, it, it takes quite a while to get to the bank and back. How long does it take? Confound it, I've got hold of the story of the century. Of the century, do you hear me? And if that annotated Darwin makes me lose oh, it. Here he is now. Uh, come in and close the door, Darwin. Uh, yes, Mr. Kent. Has he got the money? Uh, just a moment. Uh, did, did you get the money, Darwin? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, he's got it. Good. Grab a cab and rush it down here at once. At once, do you hear? Right. Uh, are you still at 
407 Clover Street? Yes, this is Walsh's rooming house. Is Lois with you? Never mind about Lois. You just get that money here and don't lose a second. Goodbye. Uh, was it was it Perry Whitecroft? I don't know. Sounded like him. But so did the man who impersonated him last night. We'd better call Inspector Henderson. No, 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 no. Not yet, not yet. I'll go down there first. You stay here, Lois. I will I... not, and that's fine. All right, all right, then come along. But but hurry, will you? Uh, just a moment, Mr. Kent. You're forgetting the money. I changed my mind, Darwin. I don't want it. Uh, but I just went to the bank, and Mr. White Put said... it back in the bank. Come on, Lois. Step on it. Seven Clover Street. That'll be a dollar sixty. Max. All right, here you are, driver. Keep the change. Come on, Lois. Much obliged, Mac. Okay. Is this the place, Clark? Yes, this is the place. I... Oh. Wait a minute. What's the matter? Something's wrong. Wrong? Yes. Something's very wrong. I... I can't figure this out. Startled, Clark Kent stares at the shingled house, his X-ray vision perceiving something which Lois Lane cannot see. We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. But first, here again is your announcer. Say, my pal Rusty ran past me like a streak of lightning this afternoon. Now, I thought maybe he was going to a fire or something, so I yelled, Hey, hey, Rusty, what's up? Well, he skidded to a stop just long enough to tell me that he was on his way over to Pee-wee's to trade a Jigs comic button he just got for Pee-wee's duplicate Popeye button. How about that? Yes, sir, Rusty was sure in a big rush to get that Popeye button to add to his collection. You know, that's one of the brand new second series comic buttons that come in packages of Kellogg's Pet. And all the kids are mighty busy these days starting their collection of all 18 of these buttons in the new second series. Each one has a true-to-life picture of one of your favorite funny sheet characters. Each one is brilliant with full comic strip colors. Mighty smart looking when you pin them on your jacket or your dress or cap. And are these new comic buttons easy to get? You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. All you do is to ask Mom to get you plenty of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And look for your prize inside every package. There's a comic button, a prize for you in every package of P-E-P Pep, the sunshine cereal. Made by Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. As Clark Kent and Lois Lane left the taxi in front of 407 Clover Street, Kent, making use of Superman's X-ray vision, suddenly stopped and stared at the shingled house. Now, a puzzled frown clouding his face, he has mounted the few steps to the door, followed by Lois. Clark, what is it? What's the matter? This, this house... What about the house? Well, when I was here earlier this morning, there were dingy curtains in the windows and a... and a hand-lettered sign, rooms for rent. Yes? But now there are Venetian blinds on the windows and the rooms for rent sign is gone. Oh, so what? They might have just put the blinds up. And empty rooms don't stay empty long these days. Oh, but there's this brass plate on the door. It says, John Simmons, teacher of piano. He wasn't here before. Well, maybe he just moved in. Well, there's something else. Wait a minute, I'll ring the bell. Now, now, look, do you think we're being very smart? I, I mean, what if the crooks are waiting in there for us? someone. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Is, uh, is Mrs. Walsh in? I beg your pardon? Mrs. Walsh, the, the, the landlady of this rooming house. I'm afraid you've made a mistake, young man. This is a private residence. What? Private residence? And a piano studio. I'm John Simmons. But I... Just a moment, Lois. Isn't this 407 Clover Street? Yes. And and this isn't a theatrical rooming house? My dear young man, I've just told you it isn't. But but I was here less than two hours ago. Well, you couldn't have been here, Clark. I tell you, I was. Uh, look, do you mind if we come in for a moment, Mr. Simmons? There's something very strange about this. I... Not at all. Come right in. Thank you. My studio is to the right. Just a moment, Mr. Simmons. This, this reception room... What... What happened to the wallpaper? What wallpaper? When I was here earlier today, there was paper on the walls. Faded paper with big blue flowers on it. Oh, Clark. My dear young man. There was, I tell you. And there were autographed pictures of old-time theatrical stars on the walls. And the furniture was broken down wicker stuff. This 
that this modern furniture wasn't here at all. I assure you, young man, you're mistaken. I tell you, I'm not. I've occupied this house for 18 years. Look, there was I... never paper or theatrical photographs on my wall. I saw them. There I... was never any broken-down wicker furniture in my reception room. And this has never been a rooming house. But there was Is a... that quite clear? I... Yeah, yeah, yes. It, it, it's clear, but I... I don't understand it. Bewildered, Clark Kent was the kindly middle-aged music teacher, and then at the neat orderly reception room. A room in which he is sure less than two hours ago stood a woman who called herself Mrs. Walsh and who spouted quotations from Shakespeare. A room with dingy wallpaper and broken-down furniture and faded theatrical photographs. What can this mean? What can all of this amazing riddle of impersonators and mysteriously wrecked apartments and false leads mean? Well, fellas and girls... See if you can guess the answer to the mystery which is even baffling Superman. And be sure to listen tomorrow and every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, to The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman DC publication. Say, if you want your dog to tag right along with the gang, if you want him to be strong and husky, don't let him eat just to fill up. Mix his scraps of meat and fat in with Grow Pup dog food. You see, Kellogg's Grow Pup has what it takes to help keep a dog hitting on all fours. And it's full of swell, meaty flavor that most dogs like. Besides, there are three different kinds of Grow Pup. Grow Pup ribbon, Grow Pup meal, and Grow Pup pellet. Ask Mother to start feeding your dog Kellogg's Grow Pup today. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Kellogg's Pep, the super delicious cereal, presents the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, defender of law and order, champion of equal rights, valiant, courageous fighter against the forces of hate and prejudice. Today, as the mystery surrounding recent events at the Daily Planet deepens, Clark Kent is at 407 Clover Street trying to find some answer to the problem. We'll join him there in a moment. But right now, let's see why Dan McCullough's young pal, Rusty, is mumbling to himself. Maggie, Jigs, Andy Dump, Hans. Fritz, Popeye. Hey, Rusty, what are you doing? Me? I'm memorizing. Memorizing? Sure, I'm trying to learn the whole list of funny paper characters. You know when that new second series of comic buttons Kellogg's Pep is putting out? Well, sure, but how come? Well, I figured if I learned all 18 in the series, I'd know which buttons to look for, and I'd know which ones I'm missing in my collection. Hey, that's a swell idea. How many have you learned? Uh, I'm not doing so well yet. I just started. <laughs> well, have you tried learning them in groups? How do you mean? Well, you know, if you learn, say, five at a time, uh, lots of folks say it's easier that way. Oh, I see. Learn a group like uh, Maggie, Jigs, Andy Gump, Hans and Fritz before I try to learn the rest. Sure. Then uh, your next group would be Olive Oil and, and Popeye, the Little King, Lord Plushbottom, and Uncle Willie. Then Emmy, Rip Winkle, Pop Jenk, Superman like that? Sure. Bet you find it easier. And I'll bet you're not the only one in the gang who's that hepped up about this brand new second series of pet comic buttons. There's a bright colored and clear cut, and it's so much fun to collect and trade duplicates with your pals. All the up-and-coming fellows and girls in our block are mighty busy with their collections. But remember, there's only one way you can get these exciting comic buttons. You can't buy them anywhere, and you don't send in a single penny, not even a box stop. You just make sure Mom keeps stocked up with plenty of Kellogg's Pep, and you'll find your prize in every package. Ask Mom for P-E-P Pep. The Sunshine Cereal, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, the adventures of Superman. <laughs> Baffled as he has never been before, Clark Kent is trying to discover who impersonated Editor Perry White on the telephone, wrecked Lois Lane's apartment, 
impersonated the girl reporter, and finally was responsible for the disappearance of Perry White, who was last seen leaving the Daily Planet with $10,000 in cash, presumably en route to a theatrical rooming house at 407 Clover Street. Certain that White is in the hands of clever swindlers, Kent, accompanied by Lois, hurried to that address. But to his amazement, 407 Clover Street turned out to be not the theatrical rooming house he had visited earlier that morning, but the residence and studio of a Mr. John Simmons, a piano teacher. Puzzled, Kent studies the paneled, tastefully furnished reception room, and finally turns to Lois and Mr. Simmons. I, I can't understand it. What, when I was here less than two hours ago, this room was twice the size it is now. It, it had faded wallpaper and, and autographed pictures of old-time actors and actresses, and, and, and the furniture was falling apart. You're mistaken, and, young man. And it was man. a theatrical rooming house. I talked to a Mrs. Walsh, the landlady, in this very room. You're mistaken, young man. I tell you, I'm not. I've occupied this house for 18 years. There's never been any paper on the walls or pictures of theatrical people or broken-down furniture. Now, look. Nor I... has there ever been a Mrs. Walsh here. But, Mr. Now, Simmons... Now, just a minute, Clark. Is Mr. Perry White here, Mr. Simmons? Who? Perry White. Editor of the Metropolis Daily Planet. I never heard of him. There, you see, Clark, we've obviously come to the wrong place. But I... Now, apologize to Mr. Simmons and we'll be going. Oh, there's really nothing to apologize for. We all make mistakes. I couldn't have made a mistake. Will you stop being a stubborn mule? Look... Really, once he gets an idea in his head, Mr. Simmons, there's just no budging him. So I see. I don't understand it. Stop repeating that, Clark. Now, come on, we've lost enough time. We've got to find the chief. Well, are you coming? Oh, all right, all right, I... I, I guess I did make a mistake. Yeah, it's quite all right. I'll show you to the door. Figure this out, Lois. I can. What do you mean? I'll tell you when we get outside. Well, goodbye. So long. Goodbye. Thank Thanks. you very much. Gosh. I don't... Snap out of his cart. You'll fall down the stairs. Oh, I'm all right. Don't worry about me. Look, what, what, what did you mean when you said you knew what had happened? Well, you got the name of the street wrong. What? I just remembered there's a Dover Street, and it's not far from here. The chief didn't say Dover. He said Clover, 407 Clover. Well, Just Clover explain. sounds like Dover. You could easily mistake them. Or the chief could. You know how he is when he's excited. Here comes an empty cab. Taxi! But I tell you, Lord... Taxi! Taxi! No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe you're right. If I did mistake the name, that would account for information telling Jimmy there was no telephone for a Mrs. Walsh on Clover Street. Of course it would. Come on, let's get in the taxi. Okay. Yes, where was I this morning? Now, how do I know? But you weren't here. Now, it's too. Uh, 407 Dover Street, driver. And hurry, please. Yes. driver. Keep the change. Thanks, Mike. Come on, Lois. Wait a minute, Clark. Hmm? 407 is a vacant store. Now, there's an apartment above it, but it's certainly not the place I visited this morning. Oh, well. Come on, let's check anyway. Here we are. Here's the entrance. Well, what are you waiting for? Oh, I, I uh, guess I'm a little nervous. You don't have to be. You're with me. Well, that's a great help. What? Okay. Look, the name on the bell is Anthar. George Anthar. Well, ring it. That's what I'm doing. Oh, there's the buzzer. Come on, let's go. Gosh, those stairs aren't very well lighted. No, I'll hold your arm. All right, come on, up we go. We shouldn't have come here alone, Clark. Oh, relax, will you? It's easy to say relax, but I don't like this one bit. Don't worry. Oh, why did I ever let myself be talked into this? <gasps> what was that? Oh. The door open on the first landing. I don't see anybody. Here's look. There's a man standing at the door. Come in, my friend. Let me do the talking, Lois. Uh, my, my name is Clark Kent. Are you expecting me? Your friends are expecting you, Mr. Kent. My friend? Oh, 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 yes, I see. Uh, this is Miss Lane. Do step in, Miss Lane. Why, uh, thank you. If you will come with me, 
I will summon your friend. We should have brought the police car. Relax. Now, Just step in through these curtains, please. We should. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Nobody's in there. There uh, isn't much light in here. Our departed friends do not like the light. Departed? Hey, wait a minute. Is that a crystal ball on the table? Yes. You're I... a fortune teller. I beg your pardon. I object to that vulgar term in reference to my ancient and honored profession. I am a spiritualist, if you please. A medium through whom you may converse with the spirits of your dear departed. Oh, Clark, a spiritualist. I thought you said my friends were expecting me. They are, young man. Those friends who have passed beyond their earthly confines. May I ask why else you came to me? Uh, a slight mistake on the young lady's part. She, she was sure Clover Street meant Dover Street, you see. I uh, don't understand. Well, frankly, neither do I. I'm sorry to have taken your time, Mr. Uh, uh, Anthar. Yes, uh, goodbye, Mr. Anthar. The door is directly ahead. Yes, I see it. Watch the steps going down, Lois. Oh, all right. Well, what's so funny? Oh, just a reaction, I guess. A spiritualist of all things. Say, maybe he could have told us what happened to the chief at that. Oh, don't joke about this, Lois. Oh, you're right, I shouldn't. Something terrible may have happened, Mr. White. Clark, wait a minute. What is it? Well, you're... You know, I just remembered. What? There's a Stover Street in Metropolis. And, oh, so what? Well, don't you see? The chief might have said Stover, and you thought he said Clover. A few minutes ago, you were sure he said Dover. Well, maybe it was Stover. Now, let's try 407 no, Stover. Oh, no, wait a minute, Lois. We can't keep running around in circles. Well, now, that's I, a perfectly I, natural... I'm starting to think this is all a bad dream. Well, believe me, it isn't a dream. But how could I have gone to a rooming house which apparently doesn't exist? I don't know, unless you... Unless I what? Nothing. Oh, I know, I know. You think I imagined all this. No, I didn't say that. But you think it. Well, I didn't. Here, wait a minute. Come on in this drugstore. What are you going to do now? I want to make a phone call. Let's see if I have a nickel. I think I have a nickel. No, I haven't. Yeah, I have one. Oh. Are you going to call Inspector Henderson again? No, I'm going to call Jim at the office. But what for? Well, it's just possible that when I didn't arrive where I was supposed to with the money, the... Chief or his impersonator called the planet again. Oh. Let's just see if it... Oh, hello. Uh, Jim Olson, please. This is Clark Kent. Now, that's our only hope, Lois. If there was any... Oh, hello. Uh, Miss Backrack? Uh, Clark Kent. Is, is Jim Olson there? He what? What? Wait a minute. Say that again. What? What just is it? Just a minute, it? Lois, please. Yes, go on, Miss Backrack. When was this? Where? See, yes, yes, I, I'll come right over. Goodbye. Clark, what is it? Clark, answer me. Clark. Strangely silent, Clark Kent stares into space as Lois tugs at his sleeve. What has happened now? We'll return in a moment for the startling climax of today's episode. But first, here again is your announcer. You know, gang, you're missing out on something the other kids are having a lot of fun with, unless you're collecting that brand new second series of comic buttons from packages of Kellogg's Pep. Sure, you're going to be out in the cold when the fellows and girls compare notes and tell how many different buttons they've collected so far and swap their duplicates. So, better hop to it. There are 18 different buttons in this new second series, you know. Each one with a speaking likeness of one of your favorite funny sheet characters. Done up in full comic strip colors, too. Bright and eye-catching as can be. Looks swell pinned on your jacket or dress or cap. And you know the best part is, you don't have to send in a single penny for these snappy new comic buttons. Not even a box stop. Fact is, you can't buy them anywhere. But you can ask Mom to get you a package of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Inside each package, there's a thrilling prize for you. Remember, that's P-E-P, -P, Pep. The Sunshine Cereal, made by Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. Clark Kent has just phoned the Daily Planet from a drugstore. And now, outside the booth, he faces Lois Lane. Clark, what is it? What's happened? Jim. What about Jim? He received a phone call about half an hour ago. Yes? He thought it was from me. 
From you? Yes, Miss Backrack answered the call first. She thought it was me, too. The man, whoever he was, said he was me, and he spoke exactly like me. Good heavens. He told Jim to get the $10,000 from Darwin, the cashier, and bring it to a certain address. But what address? I don't know. Miss Backrack didn't know. Jim didn't say. He just got the money and rushed out. And now... Now Jim's gone, too. Jimmy Olsen gone, too. Apparently the victim of the same clever gang that trapped Perry White. And Superman helpless to aid them as he seeks desperately for a way through the tangled, baffling maze of mystery. What will happen next? Tomorrow's episode is tense and exciting, fellows and girls. So don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And follow the adventures of Superman. Fellas and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman D.C. publication. Say, how about being a pal to your dog like he is to you? Do him a good turn. Treat him to Kellogg's Grow Pup Dog Food. It's so full of meaty flavor, and there are three different kinds to pick from. There's Grow Pup Ribbon, Grow Pup Meal, and Grow Pup Pellets. You can give your dog the kind he likes best, because they all have what it takes to help keep him right on the beam. For lots of muscle, for strong bones and teeth, ask Mother to base your dog's diet on Kellogg's Grow Pup every day. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. The super delicious cereal presents the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, defender of law and order. Champion of equal rights. Valiant, courageous fighter against the forces of hate and prejudice. Today, there are many surprises in store for the Man of Steel. But before we join him at the Daily Planet in his guise of Clark Kent, let's join Dan McCullough, who has a swell suggestion to make. Say, gang, you ever been on a treasure hunt? Why, sure you have. And you know what's as much fun as a treasure hunt? Opening a package of Kellogg's Pep. Yes, sir. It's downright exciting fun to see which prize you'll find inside the package of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal. You know, these comic buttons in the brand new second series are really knockouts. Bright comic strip colors, the outlines of the pictures so clear and sharp that, well, every single one of these new buttons is a real eye-catcher. Take that picture of Andy Gump, for instance. He looks so real that, well, it seems like you could almost hear him laughing. And Popeye with his corncob pipe. And Superman. And all the other familiar comic strip characters. Now, there are 18 different buttons in this new second series. So, you'll want to get busy. The more buttons you collect, the more fun you'll have comparing notes with your friends and swapping duplicates. Today, ask Mom to get you a package or two of Kellogg's Pep. Because that's the only way you can get these nifty comic buttons. You don't send in a single penny, not even a box stop, and you can't buy them anywhere. You just look inside the pet package to get your bright-colored comic button. That's P-E-P, Pep, the sunshine cereal, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. No, the adventures of Superman. A series of bewildering events has Clark Kent literally walking in circles. First, Editor Perry White phoned him, asking him to call for Lois Lane at her apartment. Kent found the apartment a shambles and Lois missing. And then White denied having phoned him. The next morning, Lois phoned White saying she had a sensational story and asking him to bring $10,000 to a theatrical rooming house on Clover Street. An hour later, Lois reappeared at the planet. She denied having phoned White, explaining she had been with her sick sister. Alarmed, Kent returned to Clover Street. But instead of the theatrical rooming house he had visited earlier that day, he found a piano teacher's studio. The rooming house had apparently vanished from the face of the earth, and so had Perry White. As we continue now, a new and startling development has taken place. Miss Backrack, White's secretary, is telling Kent and Lois about it in Kent's office at the Daily Planet. Listen. I was just going out to lunch when you... I mean, this man called, Mr. Kent. He said he was you, and he sounded exactly like you. What exactly? Good heavens. Go on, Miss Backrack. Well, he asked for Jimmy Olsen, Uh so I had the call switch to your office where Jimmy was. 
A moment later, Jimmy came running out all excited. He said you wanted him to bring you that second $10,000. Bring it where? Well, he didn't say. He just said he had a rush. He went into Mr. Darwin's office, and then I saw him leaving with a package. He might have told Darwin where he was going. Come on, Lois. All right, let's hurry. Oh, I hope nothing's happened to Jimmy. Afraid something has. So am I. What's going on around here, Clark? Well, a lot of things I can't make head or tail of. The only thing I'm sure of is that Jim was tricked into delivering $10,000 somewhere, just as the chief was. Now they're both gone. Oh, Clark. Take it easy. Take so it easy, I'm... Lois. Darwin might be able to help us. Here, here we are. Mr. Darwin. Please, please, I'm adding a column of figures. Well, never mind the figures. Close the door, will you, Lois, please? Thanks. Now, Mr. Darwin, did Jim Olson tell you where he was going with the $10,000 you gave him? He said he was taking it to you. Goodness gracious, didn't he? Well, just answer my question. Did he say where he was taking it? Where I was? I didn't ask him. Good grief, why didn't you? Oh, why should I? Well, I... Mr. White had instructed me to give the money to Mr. Kent, but he rushed away without taking it. So when young Olson said Mr. Kent had phoned for the money and Miss Backrack confirmed it, I naturally gave it to him. Uh, tell me. Is anything wrong? Plenty. What do we do, Clark? Come with me. Well, now, look here, Mr. Kent. I've been put... Where are we going? See the elevator starter in the lobby and Mike at the newsstand. One of them might have noticed Jim leaving. I want to know if there was a car waiting for him or if he took a cab. Come on. Sure, I saw Jim get out of an elevator, Mr. Kent, but I didn't see where he went. Around lunch hour, and the crowd was pretty thick. Thanks, Joe. Come on, Lois. Mike. Hi, Mr. Kent. Hi. Hi, Miss Lane. Hello, Mike. Mike, did you see Jim Olson leave the building about an hour ago? Yeah, you sure. Did? He bought a Hershey bar. Did, did you see where he went? He went out. I know, but you didn't notice whether he got into a cab, did you? No, I was too busy. It was around lunchtime. Oh, dear. What are we going to do now, Clark? There's an empty cab at the corner. Come on. Thanks, Mike. Okay, Mr. Kent. What do we want a cab for? We're going to police headquarters and put this up to Inspector Henderson. Oh, I wouldn't get the police in on this yet if I were you, Clark. But we can't. Look, what about your detective friend, Candy Myers? Say, that's a good idea, Lois. Look, I'll tell you what you do. Grab that cab while I call Miss Backrack at the office and tell her we'll be at Candy's if she needs it. Okay, but hurry. You bet. We need help and fast. Go on, get going. Now... Jim disappeared, just as Mr. White did. Maybe you can help us, Candy. Well, I'll do everything I can, Kent, but frankly, the way you tell it, this case has me buffalo. Buffaloed? It's got me walking around in circles. Why was Miss Lane's apartment wrecked? The motive wasn't burglary because nothing was stolen. And, and what happened to Mrs. Walsh's rooming house? It, it couldn't just evaporate into thin air. I don't think it ever existed. What are you talking about, Lois? Didn't I tell you I was there myself this morning and spoke to Mrs. Walsh? You said the address was 407 Clover Street. That's right. But when you took me to 407 Clover Street, Clark, it turned out to be a piano studio and residence. And Mr. Simmons, the piano teacher, had lived there for 18 years. What? I can't understand that. Well, can't you? No. Can you? Well, I... Well, What? Nothing. Go ahead and say it. You think I'm dreaming. Well, you must admit it seems strange, Clark. Look, I... A rooming house can't be there one minute and gone the next. You're darn tootin' it couldn't. Well, just the same it was there. I tell you, it couldn't have been, And Clark. I tell you, it was. Well, now... And there's another thing that bothers me. What's that? Whoever impersonated Mr. White and Miss Lane and me on the telephone must know us very well. The voices, inflections, everything was perfect. Well, if it's a party, I think it is. All he had to do was listen to you talk once or twice... And then imitate you perfectly. How do you think it is? What do you mean, Candy? I think I know who's behind all this. You do? Who? Who, Candy? A very smooth crook named Jack Andrews. At least that used to be his name. He's got a dozen aliases. This is his usual technique, impersonating people and luring them into traps. Usually. Usually what? The victim is never seen again. Good heavens. You said his name is Andrews, Candy? What does he look like? Uh, your guess is as good as mine, Jim. Why, what do you mean? Well, we know he's of average height and build, gray eyes, brown hair, nothing distinctive about him. But one day, he's just as likely to be in Pittsburgh, three inches taller and red hair, and the next week be in St. Louis, a fat little old guy, stooped with snow-white hair. What? You mean he's a disguise artist? He's Mr. Disguise himself. He can even do things to his eyes to change their shape and... Oh, I've been on his trail a dozen times, but I've never been able to lay my hands on him. Good grief, and he's got Jimmy and Mr. White. You... You've got to find him, Candy. Believe me, Miss Lane, I'll do all I can. But I'm not too hopeful. We haven't got a single lead except... Oh, excuse me. My phone. Sure. Hello? Is Lord Kent there, please? Oh, just a minute. For you, Kent. For me? Yeah. Hello? Hello, Mr. Kent? Yes? Listen closely, Mr. Kent. Listen very closely. If you want to see Jim Olson and Perry White again... Who is this? Wait a minute, I know. You're Miss... Yes, I'm Mrs. Walsh. But don't repeat it. And don't try to 
trace this call. I called your office and they told me where you were. If anything goes wrong, if you don't follow my orders exactly, you'll never see your friends again. Do you understand? Yes. You go on. Go to your apartment immediately. Alone. Say nothing to anyone. Is that clear? Yes, yes. Someone will call on you there. But if you try to set any traps, you will never hear from us again. Or from White and Olsen either. I understand. Good. But remember, no tricks. We're not stupid, Mr. Kent. I promise. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Who is that, Clark? Huh? Oh, I I'll tell you later, Lois. I I've got to be going now. What do you mean? Where are you going? I can't tell you. Why can't you? Clark, did that call have anything to do with Jimmy and the team? I'll see you later. So long, Candy. Clark, you come back come here. Come back here, Kent. Right, Kent. Kent. Come back here, I say. Kent! Kent! Rushing to the door, Candy Myers is just in time to see Clark Kent disappear around the turn in the corridor. Who was the woman who called Kent? And what will happen at his apartment? We'll return in a moment to find out. But first, here again is your announcer. You know, one of the gangs said the other day that he can't figure out which is the most fun when Mom brings home some Kellogg's Pep, eating big heaping bowls full of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, or finding his prize in the package. Well, of course, he's collecting that brand new second series of Pep comic buttons now. And he's mighty eager to get a lot of them. They're so doggone colorful and bright and sparkling. Why, they look as if they could almost talk. Like Maggie and Jigs, for instance, or Olive Oil, or Superman himself. What's more, you can't beat the fun of collecting all 18 buttons in this new second series and comparing notes with your friends and swapping duplicates. So, how about asking Mom to get you a package or two of Kellogg's Pep when she's marketing tomorrow? That's the only way you can get these snappy new comic buttons, you know. You can't buy them, and you don't have to send in a single penny, not even a box stop. These comic buttons come only as prizes in packages of Kellogg's Pep. So, hop to it, gang. Get busy on your collection. Tell your mother you'd like plenty of P-E-P, Pep, the sunshine cereal made by Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. <laughs> A mysterious phone call from a woman instructing Clark Kent to go to his apartment and wait for a visitor sent Kent hurrying from the office of Candy Myers, private detective. As we continue now, he has been restlessly pacing the floor of his apartment for almost an hour. The evening shadows are beginning to lengthen over the city, and a nearby church clock is tolling five when there is a knock at the door. Whirling, Kent strides to the door and opens it, and then blinks in astonishment at his visitor. What the... A tall man in a skin-tight gray costume. Blue cape, blue hood, and mask. Batman! Hello, Kent. Mind if I come in? No, of course not. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I'm expecting someone, Batman. Uh, I don't want to seem rude, but this is very important. Sure, I know. You were expecting me. You? That's right. And here I am. Hey, now, wait a minute. I don't get it. I received a phone call from... From, from Mrs. Walsh, the mysterious rooming house landlady. That's right. How did you know? I know quite a bit about this case, Kent. What? More than you think I know. And a lot more than you want me to know. More than I want you to know? What do you mean, Batman? I'll tell you, but you'd better prepare yourself for a shock. The shock of your life. Amazed, Clark Kent waits for Batman to explain. What is the famous Batman's connection with this mystery? And what did he mean when he said he knew much more than Kent wanted him to know? Our story has taken a strange new twist, fellows and girls. Even stranger and more startling than anything that has gone before. Monday's episode will keep you on the edges of your chairs. So don't miss it. Be sure to tune in, same time, same station, for a thrill a minute in the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Here's a special salute to the Boys Clubs of America, an organization that's 40 years old this week. 40 years of boys helping their neighbors, learning new skills, building boys into better men. All America congratulates Boys Clubs of America. And fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman... Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman DC publications. 
Say, if your dog is a softy, here's a little trick that you can try to help give him lots of muscle. Mix grow pup dog food in with his scraps of meat and fat. See if it doesn't make his eyes brighter, his coat glossy, and see if it doesn't give him lots of oof, so that pretty soon he'll be able to take it and scramble right along with the gang. Lots of champs feed on grow pup, you know. So let your dog have his pick of grow pup ribbon, grow pup meal, or grow pup pellet. Just so his mother remembers, write Kellogg's Grow Pup on her marketing list right now. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Kellogg's Pep, the super delicious cereal, presents the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, defender of law and order, champion of equal rights, valiant, courageous fighter against the forces of hate and prejudice, who today takes the first important step toward solving the mystery which has had him baffled. We'll join him in a moment. But first, Dan McCullough has something to say about spring. Come in, Dan. You know what I think makes spring so swell? It's the sunshine. Sure, good old cheerful sunshine. And you know what makes breakfast particularly swell these sunny mornings? Big heaping bowls full of that sunny golden toasted cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Yes, sir. Pep certainly has a way with morning appetite. Makes them sit up and take notice. And nutritious? Why, Kellogg's Pep gives you more than twice as much of an energy vitamin, B1, as sun-ripened whole wheat. Plus, your whole daily minimum need of sunshine vitamin D in every serving. Mom knows how you need those important vitamins. And you know about the exciting prizes you get in packages of Pep. Why, probably you've already started collecting that brand new second series of comic buttons all the gang's hepped up about. Think of it, 18 different pictures of your favorite funny paper characters. And they're so easy to get. Sure, you don't send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. All you do is to make sure Mom keeps stocked up with plenty of Kellogg's Pep. And there's your prize in every package. Just ask Mom to get P-E-P, Pep, the sunshine cereal. Made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek and Omaha. Now, the adventures of Superman. For the first time in his career, Clark Kent, even in his role of Superman, seems to be faced with a baffling mystery that has no solution. First, Editor Perry White disappeared while presumably delivering $10,000 in cash to Lois Lane. Then, Jimmy Olsen disappeared, delivering another $10,000 to Kent himself. Worried and confused, Kent consulted Candy Myers, his private detective friend. While at Candy's office, received a strange phone call instructing him to go to his apartment alone and await a visitor. At the close of yesterday's episode, the visitor arrived. To Kent's amazement, it was Bruce Wayne, otherwise known as Batman. Smiling, Batman stepped into the apartment and closed the door behind him. Batman! Oh, yes, you look surprised, Kent. Well, have I... Are uh, you the visitor? If you mean, am I the person you've been expecting? Yes. Well, Mrs. Walsh was unnecessarily mysterious when she calls you. She could have told you I was coming over. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How do you know Mrs. Walsh? I know quite a lot about this case, Kent. In fact, maybe more than you do. More than I do? Uh-huh. So get ready for a shot. A sh- you mean something's happened to Jim and Mr. White? That man, what is it? Take it easy, Kent. Take it easy. Don't well, lose your head. Tell me, then. Just don't stand there. Relax, Kent. Relax. Your nerves are shot. I don't wonder. Don't worry about my nerves. Start talking. How did you happen to get into this? Where did you make contact with Mrs. Walsh? What's this oh, shot? wait a minute. Wait a minute. One thing at a time. we better start at the beginning. You were in touch with Inspector Henderson, weren't you? Oh, just by phone. Well, he called me in and told me what happened. All about the phony message from Lois asking for $10,000. Then the phony message from White asking for 10000 more. And to cap it all, the theatrical rooming house with wings. Wings? Well, you know, according to Henderson, the address White gave you for the delivery of the money. Um, what was it? Uh... 407 Clover Street. Yes, that's right. It was a theatrical rooming house in the morning and a piano teacher studio in the afternoon. It's one of the things I don't understand. Well, let's skip it for the moment. I'm interested in the woman who ran the rooming house, not the house itself. Mrs. Walsh. That's right. I tracked her down, Kent. You did? Where is she? How can I get oh, to her? Wait, wait, take it easy. Well, she's the key to the whole mystery. She can answer questions that may lead us to Jimmy and White. That's the strange and confusing part of it, Kent. What? 
Mrs. Walsh doesn't know a solitary thing. Doesn't know? Oh, that's ridiculous. It all started in her place. What place? Her, her rooming house. She has no rooming house. What? I said she has no rooming house. Now, look. She I... lives alone in a small hotel. That's not true. I was in her house. I talked to her. I... Now, look, you know me as well as anyone. In fact, in fact, you're the only person alive who knows my double identity, that Clark Kent is Superman. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, do you think I'd stand here and tell you I spoke to Mrs. Walsh in her rooming house if I hadn't? Frankly, at the moment, I don't know what to think. All I know is that Jim Olsen and Perry White are missing with $20,000 in cash, and it doesn't look good. You're telling me? No, I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. But what I do want to tell you is that Henderson's getting suspicious. Suspicious of whom? Of you. Of me? Uh-huh. That's why I'm here. To warn you that if you're holding anything back, you'd better open up. Well, now, look, why should I hold anything back? I don't know. Miss Lane seems to have a theory. Oh, Miss Lane. Miss Lane always has a theory. What's this one? Well, she says either you imagined all this or you're not talking because you want to solve it yourself. Oh, that's brilliant. Positively brilliant. I imagined her apartment all smashed up, didn't I? I imagined a phone call from Perry White or someone uh, who sounded like easy. Perry take White. Take it easy. Sure, I'm just sure, repeating sure. what you yeah, said. I know, I know. I imagined the rooming house and Mrs. Walsh. Well, uh, I imagined what about her other hunch? That you're hogging the solution. Oh, that's an old story with Lois. She has a jealous streak. As a matter of fact, I've thrown more stories her way than you can check a sick ass. One of these fine days when she learns that Clark Kent is Superman, she'll have a lot of apologizing to do. She says you made the statement that every mystery has a solution. Did I? So she said. Well, I don't remember, but whether I did or not, it's true. Every mystery has a solution. Well, then, what about... The... I know, I know, I know. What about this mystery? Right. Well, if you tell me where I can find Mrs. Walsh... Well, let's not get back to that again, Kent. Mrs. Walsh is being watched, watched like a hawk. Who's watching her? Oh, who do you think? Well, I don't know. I don't know who's doing anything anymore. I'm running around in circles. Why did Henderson call you in? Why didn't he call me? I told you yeah, why. Oh, sure, he suspects me. But why? What have I done? Why should he suspect me? That may be Henderson now. No, it's Candy Myers. How do you know? I... Oh, oh, oh I forgot. X-ray vision. Just a moment. Hello, oh, Candy. Hello, oh, Candy. Oh, hi, Candy. Hello, Batman. Anything new, Candy? Plenty. You mean you've got a lead on Jimmy and the Chief? No. Well, what's new then? I just had a talk with Henderson at headquarters. Yes? He won't wait much longer. He won't wait for what? Can't stop playing, Tom. You know what. Well, I'm afraid I don't. Henderson thinks you're holding something back. No. I've been telling him that, Candy, but he won't believe me. I believe you, but it's ridiculous. I... Maybe I'd better call Henderson. No, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Call Henderson. Well, heaven's sake, why not? Well... Well, because... Well, because what? I told him you were hiding out. Hiding out? You told him... Candy in the name of heaven. What's going on? Take it easy, Kent. Don't lose your head. head. Don't lose my head. I'm losing my mind. Why did you tell Henderson I was hiding out? Because I didn't want him to grab you. That's why. What's he going to grab me for? I haven't done anything. Now, look, Kent. Let's face it. There's something screwy about this case. Oh, you can say that again. Harry White and Jimmy Olsen are missing with 20000 in cash. And you were the one who... Hold it. That may be Henderson. Let me take nothing doing. If it is Henderson, I'll tell him a thing or two. Uh oh. Hello. This is Candy Myers there. This is his office calling. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a moment. It, 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 it's for you, Candy. You're up. Oh, thanks. Hello. Candy. Yeah. Jackson. Yeah. We just got a hot tip, boss. Yeah. What? Look in the hall closet in Clark Kent's apartment. You'll find it in a hat box. Okay, Jackson. Thanks. Hanging up, Candy Myers turns toward the hall closet. Clark Kent, having heard the telephone conversation by making use of Superman's acute hearing, is already facing the closet. Suddenly, his jaw drops. The color drains from his cheeks. Great Scott! He's right. It is in the closet. What is in the closet? Well, just between us, it's the solution to the mystery. So stand by for just a moment... Until we return with the startling climax of today's episode. Say, it's a big moment, isn't it, gang? When Mom opens a package of Kellogg's Pep. Because right away, you're looking for one of those exciting comic buttons in the new second series all the gang is collecting. You're wondering which button you'll get, whether it might even be a duplicate so that you can have the fun of trading with one of your pals. You know, every single one of these 18 comic buttons in the new second series is a knockout. Take Emmy, for instance. Of the Moon Mullins comic strip. Boy, she looks just like she does in the funny papers. Her hair up in a knot and her spectacles and all. Or Jigs with his tall, silk hat. 
or Superman, complete with flying red cape and Superman emblem. Now, you'd sure hate to miss out on the fun all the rest of the fellows and girls are having with this new second series of comic buttons. Why, you'll want to collect all 18 of them and wear them on your jacket or your dress or cap. So, better get busy. First, ask Mom to get you a good supply of Kellogg's Pep, because that's the only way you can get these keen-looking buttons. You can't buy them anywhere, and you don't send in any money, not even a box stop. You just look inside the pet package, and there's your exciting prize from P.E.P. Pet, the sunshine cereal made by Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. A strange scene is taking place in Clark Kent's apartment. One of Candy Myers' detective agency operatives has just called to give Candy a hot tip. The information that something important is in Kent's hall closet. As we continue now, Candy has just opened the closet door. Reaching up, he removes a hat box from the shelf. Flips the cover off. There, half hidden under some crumpled tissue paper, are two banded packages of money. Batman is the first to react. Great Jehoshaphat! Money! Ten thousand dollars in each package. What's the answer to this, Kent? I... I don't know. You mean to say you didn't know the money was in here? Of course not. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Do you think I... No, no, I won't even say it. Don't hold anything back, Kent. We're your friends. You're my friends. I'm not holding anything back. How many times do I have to tell you? And I don't know how that money got into my closet. Well, it looks bad. $20,000 is missing and it turns up in your closet. Wait a minute. How did your office know it was there? Search me. Jackson said he had a hot tip. Oh, I'll say it was hot. Boy, if Henderson had found this, you'd be in trouble, Kent. But I tell you, I didn't know anything about it. I never saw that money before. All right, all right. Calm down. You've got to move fast. Move fast? Move where? You're coming along with us until we get a chance to iron this thing oh, out. Now. You can come to my house, Kent. Now, wait a minute, both of you. I'm not running away. I've got nothing to run away from. What about Henderson? If he finds out this money... I'm not afraid of Henderson. Be sensible, Kent. We believe you, but Henderson won't. He's got to believe me. Take my word for it, Kent. He won't. When I spoke to him less than an hour ago, he was convinced you were behind all this. He was? Yes. If you're smart, you'll hold up at Batman's place until I can do some snooping around. All right. Now you're using your head. I'd better change my suit and pack a few things. Okay, but hurry. Fast as I can. Yes, fast as I can. Out of these clothes. (laughs) Sir, I'm afraid this is a job for Superman. In a matter of moments, Clark Kent's business suit has given way to the colorful blue and red costume of Superman. Tiptoeing to the bedroom window, the Man of Steel raises it gently, glances back at the closed door, and then... Out! And away! Leaps high above the city and heads for police headquarters. Less than a minute later, once more in the guise of the mild-mannered reporter, he enters Inspector Henderson's office. Hello, Kent. Hello, Inspector. Look, I've got to work fast. Just answer one question for me. When did you last see Candy Myers, the private detective? Myers? Yes. Oh, about six months ago? I thought so. Well, the mystery is solved, Inspector. What mystery? The mystery of the strange disappearance of Perry White and Jimmy Olsen. It's solved. I know the answer. Grinning like a Cheshire cat, Clark Kent repeats his startling statement. Yes, Inspector? I know the answer. What is the answer? How did Kent solve the mystery? Do you know? Have you any idea? Well, we'll all know tomorrow, so don't miss it. Tune in same time, same station for the surprising solution to the puzzling mystery and for the further adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman D.C. publications. You know, gang, a dog likes having his own feeding dish and his own bed. And I bet you he likes his own food, too, instead of yours, if you give him Kellogg's Grow Pup dog food. Grow Pup has a grand, meaty flavor most dogs go for, and it helps keep them husky, too. Helps give them strong bones and teeth and muscles. There are three different kinds of Grow Pup, all of them wonderful for your dog. There's Grow Pup ribbon, Grow Pup meal, and Grow Pup pellets. 
Ask Mother to get Kellogg's Grow Pup today. See if your dog doesn't go for it right off the bat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Kellogg Pep! The super delicious cereal presents the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and ability far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, defender of law and order, champion of equal rights, valiant, courageous fighter against the forces of hate and prejudice, who today gets to the bottom of the mystery that has baffled him and begins to turn the tables on those who are behind it. We'll join him in a moment. But first, a word from our friend, Dan McCullough. You know, you fellas and girls are going to get a lot of chuckles out of your collection of those new second series of comic buttons from packages of Kellogg's Pep. For instance, the picture of Uncle Willie from the Moon Mullins comic strip. Boy, it's a knockout. There he is, his eyes popping, his old felt hat sitting on one side of his bald head, and his big black cigar sticking out from his brush-like mustache. And you'll get a kick out of Maggie, too, with her silly grin and her, and her, her button nose. And, of course, there's Superman. He's doggone good-looking, with his bright red cape slung back over his shoulders and the Superman emblem on his jersey. Yes, sir, every single one of these new second series buttons looks mighty snappy and colorful and bright, so that, well, you'll want to get all 18 of them and wear them pinned on your jacket or your dress or cap. And you'll want the fun of trading duplicates with your pals. So don't miss out. Ask Mom to get you plenty of Kellogg's Pep, because that's the only way you can get these swell comic buttons. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop, and you can't buy them anywhere. But when Mom opens a new package of Pep, you just look inside for your exclusive prize. There's a comic button in every package of P-E-P, Pep, the sunshine cereal, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, the adventures of Superman. A bewildering series of events in which Lois Lane's apartment was turned topsy-turvy. A theatrical rooming house seemingly vanished into thin air, and Perry White and young Jimmy Olsen disappeared while carrying large sums of money had Clark Kent completely mystified. Then, to cap the climax, the famous Batman and private detective Candy Myers discovered $20,000, the exact sum White and Jimmy had vanished with, in a closet in Kent's apartment. At that point, Kent began to suspect the truth. Leaving Batman and Candy in the living room of the apartment, he retired to the bedroom, supposedly to change his clothes and pack a suitcase. Instead, as Superman, he speaks to police headquarters, where, once more in his guise of Clark Kent, he asked Inspector Henderson when he had last seen Candy Myers. Listen. Myers? The private dick? Yes, Candy Myers. Oh, I haven't seen him in six months. Well, that does it. Now I know the answer. The answer to what? The answer to this mystery. I had a hunch there was something rotten in Denmark when both Batman and Candy warned me not to call you. Not to call me? Yes. Candy said he'd just come from headquarters and that you were after my hide. Say, I don't get this. Start at the beginning, Kent. Well, the beginning was the 1st of April, April Fool's Day. That's when it started. That's when Perry White called me and told me to pick up Lois at her apartment. April Fool's Day? Of course. It was all an April Fool's joke. On me. You mean Lois Lane's apartment wasn't wrecked? White and Olsen didn't disappear? Oh, Lois's apartment was wrecked, all right, and Jimmy and the chief disappeared, but it was all arranged. They rigged up an unsolvable mystery to fool me. You mean to sit there and tell me the whole business was a practical joke? Sure. Yes, and now that I look back, I know what started it. What? My statement to Lois and the chief that every mystery had a solution. Yes, I remember her saying, Oh, you think you can solve anything, don't you? So they cooked up one that you couldn't solve, huh? That's right. Well, they'll pay for this, Kent. They can't fool around with the police department and get away with it. Oh, and another not. thing. They've got to be taught that practical jokes are dangerous. Well, I intend teaching them just that, Inspector, in no uncertain terms. Wait, Scott, I've got to get back to my apartment. Hey, Kent, wait a minute. I can't wait, Inspector. I'll see you later. Let's see, where can I get out of these clothes? I forgot all about Batman and Candy. Oh, that looks like an empty office. Yes, it is. Batman or Candy decide to walk into the bedroom before I get there. I'm sunk. Here we are. That does it. 
Now, up for the window. Out! And away! Breaking away from police headquarters, Superman heads for his apartment, where, in the meantime, Batman and Candy are becoming impatient. Taking Ken an awful long time to pack a bag. No, I was just thinking the same thing. Poor guy, he's probably all thumbs. We've sure got him going. You know, Candy, I'm beginning to feel sorry for him. He's running around like a squirrel in a cage trying to solve something that can't be solved. It, it really isn't fair. Well, White's figuring I'm breaking it this afternoon. Hey, what's keeping him? Can't. Can't. It's funny. No answer. Oh, my God. You forgot what? Uh, better take a look in the bedroom, Candy. He, uh, he may not be there. What? Ah, he's there. I just heard him. Hey, Kent! Get right with you. <coughs> <coughs> not Kent's voice. Uh, I'm going in there. Uh, no, no, wait, wait, Candy. Kent! Just a minute. There, there. Why, that's Kent. Yeah, but who's in there with him? Yeah, sorry I kept you waiting. Uh, anybody else in that bedroom, Kent? Huh? Why, uh, no. Uh, no. Candy thought he heard another voice. A deep voice. Oh, I had a little frog in my throat the first time you called. Uh, well, gentlemen, it's uh, nice to step off the merry-go-round. Well, what do you mean? Where's your bag? we got to get going. I don't think we're going anyplace, Mr. Myers. Now that I'm off the merry-go-round, I'm staying off. What are you talking about? This is it, Candy. I can tell by the glint in his eyes. The cat's out of the bag. And ready to claw you fine gentlemen into ribbon. Now, wait a minute. Too bad you slipped up, Candy. I slipped up? How? When you told me you saw Henderson an hour ago, you haven't seen him for six months. How did you know? I'll let you figure that one out. Right now, you can clear up some things for me. Whose idea was this April Fool's joke? Lois? Yeah, yeah. She got White and Jim in on it, then she called us. Surprised that Jim would have any part of it. Well, he kicked like a steer, but they forced him into it. Uh-huh. What about Mrs. Walsh? Who was she? Oh, she's an old-time actress. Lois hired her from a theatrical agency. Well, I must say, this was an expensive gag. Breaking up Lois's apartment, hiring actresses... How did they arrange that switchover from a theatrical rooming house to a piano studio? It was originally a piano studio. Simmons was a friend of White's. All they had to do was get some false partitions in, hang up a few theatrical photographs, change the furniture around a bit, and that did it. Uh-huh. And all because I said every mystery had a solution. That's right. You're, uh, you're not sore, are you, Ken? No, no, I'm not sore. Well, I guess we'd better call White and company and tell them the gag's all oh, over. Wait a minute, Candy, wait a minute. Where is White? He and Jim are hiding out at the newspaper club. Is uh, Lois with them now? I guess so. They're probably rolling on the floor laughing at how well the gag's going. Good. Let them laugh. The gag's over. Oh, no, it isn't. Now it's my turn. Well, what do you mean, Ken? I mean I'm going to turn the tables on them. You can call them, Candy, but don't tell them I'm wise. Tell them... Oh, tell them I'm going around in circles. You mean... I gonna... mean I'm going to teach them that practical jokes are bad medicine. Well, how, Ken? I'll figure some way. Just you play along. Okay, if you say so. Well, what do you want us to do? I want you to call them and tell them I'm so dizzy I can't see straight. Tell them you finally persuaded me to take a sedative and go to bed. Throw them off guard. Carefully, Kent gives Batman and Candy instructions as to how to proceed in the turnabout of Lois's mysterious April Fool's joke. Later that evening, a car with Editor Perry White at the wheel and Lois and Jimmy crowded into the front seat beside him turns into the suburb of Brentwood and rolls through the dark, tree-lined streets. I told Foco to have a ten-course dinner ready for us. <laughs> Taking Kent for a buggy ride deserves a celebration. Any mystery <laughs> can be solved, says Mr. Kent. Yeah, we showed him one that couldn't be. <laughs> I don't think it's funny anymore. Oh, what's that, Olsen? He said it isn't funny anymore. Oh, Jim. I wish I hadn't let you talk me into it in the first place. Why, I thought you had a sense of humor, Jim. Well, I have, but... Gee whiz, this joke's gone too far. Candy said Mr. Kent was so... So... Dizzy was the word. Oh, oh. Well, anyway, <laughs> Mr. Kent had to take a sedative and go to bed. I don't think that's funny at all. No, you don't. No. As soon as we get to your house, I'm going to call up Mr. Kent and tell him. You're going to do no such thing. I am, too. Gosh, poor Mr. Kent. Poor he... Mr. Kent, my eye. If he can't take a joke, it's just too bad. Besides, maybe now he'll stop thinking he's Sherlock Holmes. Oh, if only I'd been there when Candy found the $20,000 in his closet. <laughs> I just want to be at 407 Clover Street tomorrow when Batman and Candy bring Clark there and he sees it's a theatrical rooming house yeah. again. Well, nothing doing. That's going too far. I'm going to tell him. If you do, Olsen, so help me out fire you. I don't care. Tomorrow's the finish, Jim. If you're not going to spoil it, understand, Olsen? Well... You promise you'll tell him tomorrow? Yes, we'll tell him all right. Will his face be red? Well, okay then, but I don't like it. Ah, here we are, and I am as hungry as a bear. Come on, now, all out. See, it's dark. You ought to have a light on the porch, Steve. I always tell Poker to put it on, but he forgets. I can make out the walk. You follow us, Miss Lane. Okay, 
Well, Kent, the great detective. Oh, I haven't had so much fun in years. <laughs> Leaps. What are you stopping for, Olson? Look. Look at what? What is it? Your house. What about my house? It, it's gone. It's what? Good heaven. Good God, for you. It, it, it is gone. Stunned, Perry White, Jimmy Olsen, and Lois Lane stare into the dark, empty hole in the ground where the editor's huge country house had stood. How could a house disappear? We'll return in a moment for the climax of today's episode. But first, here again is your announcer. Yes, sir. The mothers of all the gang are sure being rushed for lots of Kellogg's Pep these days because, of course, it's such a sunny, golden, toasted, whole wheat flake cereal. And because it's the prize package where you get those exciting comic buttons. Real true-to-life pictures of your favorite funny sheet characters. A new second series of 18 different buttons, including Maggie and Jigs and Andy Gump and Hans and Fritz and, and Olive Oil, Popeye, the Little King, Lord Plushbottom, Uncle Willie, and, and Emmy, Rip Winkle, Pop Jenks, and Superman, of course. Why, these pictures look so doggone real, you'd think they were going to talk. They're done up in full comic strip colors on bright white enamel buttons that really show up when you pin them on your jacket or your dress or cap. And it's no end of fun to compare notes with your friends and see who's got the most different buttons. What's more, these pep comic buttons are easy to get. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. All you do is to ask Mom to get you a package or two of Kellogg's Pep and look for your prize inside the package. Remember now, these exciting prizes come only in packages of P-E-P Pep, the sunshine cereal made by Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. Arriving at Perry White's suburban home in the late evening, the gray-haired editor, Jimmy Olsen, and Lois Lane were startled to see only a large, gaping hole where the house had once stood. Pulling themselves together, they drove into the village. And as we continue now, they have just returned with the sheriff. Well, here we are. Come on. Come on, Sheriff. Right behind you. You're playing this joke, Mr. White. This is no joke, Sheriff. I tell you, my house is missing. Someone stole yes, it. That's right. Will you see, sir? A house missing? Why, of all there. the creeps... It was right there. And, gee, look. <gasps> Leaps. It, it's back again. Good God, Frank. Heavenly days. It, it is back again. Their jaws sagging. Perry White, Jimmy Olsen, and Lois Lane stare incredulously at the big house, which, but a few minutes before had not been there. And as they stare, then rub their eyes and stare again, Superman, high above them in the dark sky, chuckles to himself. Surprise, my friends? Well, this is nothing to what's going to happen in a few minutes. Just you wait and see. What will Superman do next? Tomorrow's episode is packed with mystery and laughs as the Man of Steel turns the tables on his friends in order to teach them that a practical joke is no joke at all. So be sure to listen. Tune in same time, same station, and listen to The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman DC Publications. You know, it wouldn't surprise me, fellas, if your dog sometimes wishes he were you. Then he could tell Mother what he likes to eat. And it wouldn't surprise me if he'd ask for Kellogg's Grow Pup dog food quick. Why, it beats all how many dogs beg for it. Grow Pup has such a swell, meaty flavor. And there are three different kinds. There's Grow Pup ribbon, Grow Pup meal, and Grow Pup pellets. They're all mighty tasty and mighty good for your dog. Help give him lots of muscle and strong bones and teeth. Remind Mother, next time she's marketing, to ask for Kellogg's Grow Pup. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. 
Kellogg's Pep. The super delicious cereal presents the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, defender of law and order, champion of equal rights, valiant, courageous fighter against the forces of hate and prejudice, who today turns the tables on Perry White and Lois Lane to repay them for their April Fool's joke and to teach them that a practical joke is no joke at all. We'll join them in a moment, but first, Here's a good tip from Dan McCullough. Say, gang, how are you about running errands for Mother? Well, it pays to be willing, you know, and particularly when she sends you to the grocery store, because chances are she's ordering another package or two of Kellogg's Pep. And that's always good, because it means that you're going to have the exciting fun of finding your prize inside. Maybe it'll be one of those brand new second series comic buttons to add to your collection, like Andy Gump, for instance with his funny nose and his mustache, or Popeye with his silly hat and corncob pipe, or Superman himself. Every single one of these comic strip characters looks just as real and just as lifelike as he does in the funny papers. And are these new second series buttons smart-looking? White enameled background on real sturdy metal with the pictures of your funny sheet favorites reproduced in brilliant red and yellow and, and blue and black. Look mighty snappy pinned on your jacket or your dress or cap. And say, gang, isn't it swell that these pep comic buttons are so easy to get? You don't have to send in a single penny, not even a box stop. Fact is, you can't buy them anywhere. All you do is to ask Mom to get you plenty of Kellogg's Pep, and you'll find your exciting prize in every package you open. Remember the name. It's P-E-P, Pep, the sunshine cereal made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, the adventures of Superman. When Clark Kent realized that the baffling events of the past few days had all been arranged by Lois Lane, Perry White, and Jimmy Olsen as an April Fool's joke on him, he resolved to teach them a lesson. That night, believing Kent was still unaware of the joke, the three pranksters drove to White's suburban home for a celebration dinner. But as they left the car and walked up the path to the house, they stopped dead in their tracks, unable to believe their eyes. The house was gone. There was nothing left but the gaping hole of the foundation. A few minutes later, when they returned to the strange scene with the sheriff, they gasped in amazement, for there, once more in its accustomed place, was Perry White's house. Hovering above them in the dark sky, Clark Kent, in his true identity of Superman, chuckled. And as we continue now, White, Lois, and Jimmy are a study in bewilderment as Sheriff Teagle lashes out at them. Now, you see here, Mr. White, just because you're the editor of a big newspaper, don't give you no leave to fool around with the law. Uh, I wasn't fooling around, Sheriff. Oh, of course not. When we were here just a few minutes ago, the house was gone. Oh, it was, eh? I suppose it just spread its wings, flew away, and then flew back, uh, eh? I, I can't understand it. Neither can I. I ought to lock up the three of you, that's what I ought to do. Get me out here on a fool's errand. That all you got to do with your time? But, Sheriff, the house was gone. You say that once more, young lady, and I will lock you up. But... Why, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. But she was, You'll Sheriff. You'll be quiet, bub. You're big enough to know better, too. Now get in the house, all of you, and if you ever do a fool thing like this again, I'll run you in sure as my name's Sam Teagle. Uh, come on, Lois. Jim. Oh, good night, Sheriff. Good night. And remember what I told you. Now, watch the stairs. Gee, this is the strangest thing. I'm sure the house was gone when we were here before. Of course it was. No, it couldn't have been. Oh, where's my key? What do you mean it couldn't have been, Chief? You saw it. I mean, you saw that it was gone. Uh, we must have been on the wrong street. No, I don't see how we... It was dark, and we were laughing about Kent. I turned into the wrong street, that's all. Well, I suppose that could be it, but no, that of course doesn't that seem... Is. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Uh, forget about it. Oh, it wasn't the wrong street. I remember... And I said it was. Now, forget about it. Oh, is that your phone? Yes, yes, uh, I'll get it. Hello? Who? Oh, yes, Tony. What? What's that? Say that again. What is it, Chief? Just a minute, Lord. Yes? Yes, I hear you, Tony. You said... Yes? Yes? Oh, you did, eh? Oh, wonderful. Where are you? Where? Uh, just a minute. Uh, right this time. Wait a minute, I'll get 
2117 Mark Frank Drive. Is that that, Lois? 2117 Mark Frank Drive. Yes. Oh, okay, Tony. Now, uh, sit tight now, and I'll be right out. What happened, please? Uh, Tony Sloan found Judge Harris. Uh, where's my hat? Sit down. Hi. Harrison? What? This is the judge who disappeared two years ago after sentencing the Scalzi gang? That's right. So yeah. where'd I put my hat? Where did Tony find him? I don't know. I don't know. But they're at that March Banks Drive address right now. Oh, what a scoop. What a scoop. I did Harrison a couple of favors in the old days, and he told Tony he'd give me the whole story. Well, uh, well don't stand there staring, Lois. Help me with find my hat. Well, it's right behind you on the table. Oh. Come on, Chief. I'm going with you. Yeah, so am I. Well, come on, come on. We'll take, we'll take my car. Chief and lizards, away from me, Mr. White. Number 2117. Here we are. Now, oh, come on. Get out, Rosa. Okay. Why, this is an empty house. Yeah. The windows are all boarded up. This can't be the place, Mr. White. It's 2117 Marchbanks Drive, isn't it? Now, come on. This house looks as if it had been empty for a long time. Because Judge Harrison was hiding out here? Uh, we'll find out right away. Oh, what a story. What a story, and it's all mine. Now watch the steps, Miss Lane. They're all busted. Okay, Jim. Now, Steve is going to get a nice bonus for this. Now, where is he? Tony! 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 Wrap on the door, Olsen. Okay. Well, that's funny. Uh, no, wait, I'll try the door. Oh, it's unlocked. Be careful, Chief. Tony! Where are you? Tony! He's not here. He must be here. Tony! It's me, Perry White. That's strange. Got your fountain pen flashlight with you, Olsen? Yeah. Here it is. What are you going to do? Have a look inside, of course. I don't like this. Oh, I don't either. There we are. Now, come on. Oh, wait. What's the matter? I, I, it's awful dark in there. Ah, ah, brilliant observation. Come on, let's go. Tony! Tony Sloan! You're sure? He said 2117 March Bank, Chief. Didn't I repeat it? And didn't you write it down? Yes, but... Uh, just stay behind me now. Look. Oh. What? Oh. What is it? Look. Look straight ahead. Where I'm pointing the flash. <gasps> Good heavens, a man. Lying on the floor. Is it... Is it Tony? I don't know. He's all huddled up with his back to us. Now, come on. Oh, it's just an old tramp. Yes, and he's sound asleep. Well, we'll find out who he is. Hey, you. You, wake up. Wake up, I say. Go on, go away. Cops? Who are you? I, I, I didn't do nothing. I was just sleeping here, see? I couldn't find a hotel room. I was going to... Hey, you ain't cops. No, I didn't say we were. Listen, did you Maybe see... Maybe you're pe Mr. White, huh? Yes, I'm White. Look out, Chief. He's getting up. Oh, I got a note for you. A note? Yeah, a note. Uh, a fellow named Tony gave it to me, and he says to stay here till you come and give it to you. He said you'd give me a dollar. All right, all right, all right. Here. Hey, here's your dollar. Now, uh, give me the note. All right, here you are, boss. Thanks. What does it take you? Read it out loud. Here, I'll hold the light for you. Mr. White, something turned up, and we had to leave fast. Get down to Pier 6 North Docks as fast as you can. Tony. Pier 6? North Dock? Well, what's the idea? I don't know. Say, you. Yeah? Was anyone with the man who gave you this note? Yeah. An old white-haired guy. This uh, Tony called him Judge. Sure, Judge Harris. That's quite old. What happened to make them leave? Well, a car drives up in front of the house and honks its horn. Tony goes outside and talks to the guy in the car, and then he comes running back in here, and he says to the old guy, we got to get back to the pier, Judge. Ellis is there. Ellis? Who's Ellis? How should I know? Oh, okay. Come on. Come on, Lois. Jim. I don't understand this, Chief. Well, neither do I. Who's Ellis? Uh, we'll find out when we get to the docks. We can be there in a half hour if we cut across the highway. I've got a hunch this is a terrific story. Well, here's Pier 6. Hold your stumps, old friend. Okay. Well, I don't see Tony. I don't see anybody. Well, neither do I. Wait a minute. Yes, yes, here it is. What? Uh, Tony's note. I want to make sure he said Pier 6. Yeah, yeah, it's Pier 6, all right. Well, then where's Tony and Judge Harrison? I don't know. Something must have gone wrong. 
puzzled, Perry White, Lois Lane, and Jimmy Olsen stand at the dark, deserted pier, straining their eyes through the light, misty fog. We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. But first, here again is your announcer. Say, gang, just in case your mother should ask, here's what to tell her about why you like Kellogg's Pet for breakfast. First of all, this super delicious whole wheat flake cereal tastes doggone good. It's crisp as can be and loaded with sunny, golden toasted, wide awake flavor. Then Kellogg's Pep is good for you. Every bowlful gives you more than twice as much of an energy vitamin B1 as sun-ripened whole wheat, plus your whole daily minimum need of sunshine vitamin D. That's the vitamin sunshine makes for you, you know. Helps build strong bones and sturdy teeth. And, of course, you get a new comic button for your collection every time Mom opens a new package of pet. Maybe Hans or Fritz or, or Olive Oil or maybe Superman himself. And if it's a duplicate, that's even more fun because then you can trade with your pals and still add to your collection. So how's about asking Mom right now to get you some Kellogg's Pep tomorrow? That's the only way you can get these snazzy comic buttons, you know. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. But there's a prize in every package of P-E-P Pep. The Sunshine Cereal, made by Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. Following the directions in reporter Tony Sloan's note, Harry White, Lois Lane, and Jimmy Olsen drove to Pier 6 on the Metropolis waterfront, but found it dark and deserted. No, that's Pier 6. There's not a soul around. Something must have gone wrong. How about checking with the office, Chief? Yeah, we'll wait a few minutes more. If Tony doesn't show up... Looking for Tony Sloan, friend. <gasps> huh? Behind us. Good heavens. Oh, who are you? Uh, put that gun down. Just don't make no funny moves and maybe the gun won't go off. Please. What's the idea? You're too nosy, mister. Nosy? Yeah, lady. Like that reporter Tony Sloan was. We don't like nosy folks, see? They get in our hair. Now just turn around and walk out on the pier. The pier? Yeah, the pier. All the way to the end. Get going. What for? You'll find out when you get there. You won't like it, but that's what happens to nosy guys. Now, get going. I'm in a hurry. Now, wait a minute. Get going, I said. Now, this gun might go off. Go on. But, gee, gee whiz. Their knees like rubber. Harry White, Lois Lane, and Jimmy Olsen turn slowly and walk out on the dark, deserted pier, closely followed by the hard-faced stranger with the gun. What does this mean? And what will happen? Is this another prank by Clark Kent? who promised to teach his friends that practical jokes are dangerous? Or is it real? We'll find out tomorrow. So be sure to be with us when White and Lois and Jimmy receive the surprise of their lives. And so does Superman. Tune in, same time, same station, and follow the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman DC publication. Kellogg's Pep, the super delicious cereal, presents the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, defender of law and order, champion of equal rights, valiant, courageous fighter against the forces of hate and prejudice who today arranges for Perry White, Lois Lane, and Jim Olsen to learn what it means to be on the wrong end of a practical joke. We'll join them in a moment. But right now, let's listen in on a discussion between Dan McCullough and his young pal, Rusty. 
So, uh, you had a good time, did you, Rusty? I sure did. That was the best party I've been to in a long time. How come? Well, it was all built around that new second series of comic buttons we're all collecting, from packages of Kellogg's Pet. Hey, that's a swell idea. Sure, like, well, we, we played a game where each one of us had to impersonate one of the funny paper characters, and the rest had to guess who it was. I see. Uh, who were you? I was Popeye. I, I got a can of spinach, see, and I put on my old striped jersey and my brother's old sailing hat, and I stuck my chin out so I'd look tough like Popeye. <laughs> Yeah. That darn pee we guess who I was almost before I was ready. <laughs> Too easy, huh? Well, how did uh, Cousin Doris come out? Well, she was Maggie at bringing up Father. They guessed her right away, too. But, but you know what? No what? I managed to do a little trading at the party, too. You did? Yeah, Pee Wee traded me his extra olive oil button for my duplicate Superman. Well. Boy, I was glad to get that one. You bet, Rusty. All the fellows and girls are mighty glad when they get another comic button to add to their collection. And particularly now that there's an exciting new second series to collect. Eighteen new buttons, each with a picture of one of your favorite comic strip characters. Each one mighty snappy looking when you pin it on your jacket or your dress or cap. Yes, sir, it's a grand hobby, collecting pet comic buttons. And it's easy, too. Sure, you don't send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. You just make sure Mom keeps plenty of Kellogg's Pep on hand and get your prize in every package you open. That's P-E-P, Pep. The Sunshine Cereal, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, the adventures of Superman. <laughs> Discovering that his friends at the Daily Planet were making him the victim of an April Fool's joke, Clark Kent decided to turn the tables on them. To begin with, Editor Perry White received a phone call from Tony Sloan, one of his reporters, who said that he had located a famous judge who had mysteriously disappeared two years ago. Certainly they were on the trail of a sensational story... White, Lois Lane, and Jimmy Olsen went to an abandoned house to meet Tony, where they found a note telling them to come to Pier 6 on the waterfront. Hurrying to the pier, they were puzzled to find it deserted, when suddenly a man with a gun loomed out of the darkness and ordered them to walk to the end of the pier. As we continue now, White, Lois, and Jimmy have been forced into a small motor launch, which is carrying them swiftly across the inky black harbor. A burly, roughly-dressed waterfront character is at the wheel. In the stern, another man with a gun raises his weapon as Perry White steps toward him. Listen. Now, look here, you. My name is Perry White, and I'm the editor of the Daily Planet. The two young people with me are Miss Lane and Jim Olson, two of my reporters. We came to the pier... Oh, they can't. They could have done you no good. We don't care who you are. Who are we? You'll find out, sister. Find out what? Where are you taking us? You'll find that out, too, bud. Now, you listen to me, whatever your name is. I don't know what you're up to, but you can't get away with this. Oh, no. Mr. White told you who we are. Our paper knows that we came to Pier 6 tonight, and as soon as we're missed, they'll notify the police. You bet they will. So what? Well, the police will find us, and it'll be too bad for you. By the time they find you, it'll be too late. Too late? Too late for what? You look like a bright young fella. Figure it out for yourself. <laughs> huh? What? Please and listen. Don't let him scare you, Jim. He's just bluffing. He wouldn't dare do anything to us. Don't make me laugh, Grandpa. Stop calling me Grandpa. Now listen. Wait a minute, uh, Chief. Come here a minute, will you? You two. Let go of my arm, horse. I'm going to make this this hoodlum tell me what it's all about. Please, please, please. I think I know what it's all about. Now he can't hear us. Sit down. I don't want to sit down. I... Please. Oh, all right, then. Now, what do you want? Now, look. Tony Sloan said that he'd found Judge Harris. And the judge had agreed to tell us what had happened to him two years ago when he disappeared. Well, what's that got to do with this? I think it's got everything to do with it. The judge disappeared after he sentenced three of the leaders of the Scalzi gang to the penitentiary for life. Right? Yes, so what? So their friends must have found out that Tony had contacted us, and they trapped us in order to keep the police from finding out about Judge Harris. Hey, you're right. I'll bet that's the answer. Well, if it is, we're in hot water. The Scalzi gang are bad actors. Oh, boy, they don't come any worse. We've got to do something before they... Well, they... Before they do whatever they're planning to. Well, what can we do? Both those ruffians have guns. Look, how about diving overboard? It's awful dark. We might be able to get away. Oh, we must be four or five miles from shore, Jim. We'd never make no, it. No, no, of course not. They turn on their searchlight, turn it off before we've gone a hundred yards. But we can't just sit here and wait. They're probably going to take us out beyond the harbor and then... Then get rid of us. Oh, dear. Oh, wait, wait. Look. Huh? What, Chief? There, there, there. There's a ship just ahead. A freighter. Yes. You see it? Yes. There she is, Ned. Bring her in easy. Oh, oh. It's a gang ship. Now what happens? Something tells me we'll find out very soon. Okay, chaps. Up on your feet. This is the end of the line. Oh, 
What do you mean? Stop playing it, dumb sister. Up the ladder. Now, go you, on. Just wait a minute. Just go on. I'm afraid you'd better, Lois. Now you're making sense, Grandpa. Move, sister. You follow it, kid. What's up there? You'll find out. Come on, climb. Well, I guess I have. No, you ain't kidding. You follow him, Grandpa. If you don't stop calling me Grandpa, yes, I slap my wrist, huh? <laughs> Go on, move. There's a man up top side wants to see you. Move. You'll find out. Now, go on. Get going. Okay. Step on deck. Lois. Jim. Oh, oh, here you are. The one who ran the boat said there's some big shot waiting for us. And he, he said this was curtain. Okay, chumps. This is the last mile. Walk. Walk? Walk where? Over to that cabin where the light is. Go on. Stop poking that gun at us. In about two minutes, you won't mind that no more. Oh, golly. Okay. This is it. Open that cabin door, kid. You mean this one? That's right. You don't have to knock. The big boss is expecting you. Open it, I said. Oh, okay. I... I guess this is it. Go on in, all of you. No, no, don't push don't me. Don't leave me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good evening. What, what? Uh, look. Good, good heavens. No, no I, I, I'm seeing things. Uh, Mr. Kidd. Clark. Don't look so startled. Well, gee. I'm not really going to make you walk the plank, much as you deserve it. Mm-hmm. Well, 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 what does this mean? Uh, what are you doing here? Oh, now, wait a minute. An accomplished practical joker like you, Chief, should have caught on long ago. Well, this little act is called turning the tables, or one good April Fool's joke deserves another. What? But Clark, you don't mean that... <sighs> That's exactly what I do mean, Lord. I hope I didn't frighten you too much, but I promised Inspector Henderson I'd teach you that sometimes practical jokes are not funny. I, I gotta sit down. How do I... Uh, say, if this is all a gag, then, then Tony Sloan was in on it with you. Of course he was. And so was Dippy, the tramp of the abandoned house, and Steve, and Nick. Say, incidentally, I hired them all at the same theatrical agency that supplied you with Mrs. Walsh, Lois. <laughs> oh, Clark. <laughs> Were we taken in? But good. Uh, yeah, we had it coming to us, all right. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're such good sports about it. Good sports, my eyes. Tony Sloan can't do that to us. Oh, They're chasing me around all night. Deserted house, Pier 6, boat rides. Ah, I'll fire him. I'll... Oh, 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 oh. You took me for a buggy ride, Chief. Can't you take one in return? Of course he can. Yes, boy, Mr. White. Well, okay. You're right, Jim. We we had it coming. Oh, that a boy, Chief. That's a spirit. <laughs> Ken, I, I got to hand it to you. you. You really put us over the chumps. <laughs> but good. Clark, wait a minute. What? Did you have anything to do with the chief's house disappearing tonight? Oh, how could he? Uh, well, strange enough, I did, Jim. What? How oh, did you... with the assistance of Superman. Superman? You mean he was in on this, too? Uh-huh. He thought it was a good <laughs> idea to teach you that practical jokes are bad medicine. Oh, that's enough for me. I'm cured. So am I. <laughs> we all had a good laugh. And now we can... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What about the $20,000? What about it? Where is it, Kent? Safe in my apartment. Candy Myers is guarding it until I get home. Well, that is a relief. Oh, he was worried. <laughs> oh, Kent, I, I wish I could have been there when Candy found the money oh. in your closet. So do I. <laughs> I had me going all right. But you should have seen your faces when yes. Steve made you find the ladder to the deck. <laughs> as our friends laugh merrily over what they vow is their last practical joke, a much different scene is taking place several miles away in Kent's apartment, where his friend, private detective Candy Myers, has fallen asleep on Kent's couch. $20,000 on a table nearby. Suddenly, the doorbell rings. Then rings again. Uh, just a minute. Uh, that you, Kent? Telegram from Mr. Kent. Okay. Uh. All right, let's have it. Stick him up, buddy, and don't move. Huh? Hey, hey, what is this? What do you think? Stick him up, I said. That's right. Now, just step back nice and easy. Okay, Chuck, come in and close the door. Hey, what is this? A gag? Fully awake now, his hands above his head, Candy Myers steps back into Clark Kent's apartment, closely followed by two masked men, each of them holding a gun. We'll return in a moment for the startling climax of today's episode. But first, here again is your announcer. 
You know, gang, even if you tried, I'll bet you couldn't think of a more exciting prize than those new second series comic buttons in packages of Kellogg's Pet. Think of it, Superman and Jigs and the Little King in full, brilliant colors on sturdy metal buttons that look mighty swell pinned on your jacket or your dress or cap. Eighteen different buttons in this new second series to collect and trade duplicates with your friends. What a hobby, and what fun to compare notes on how many all the fellows and girls have collected and to look for a new one whenever Mom opens a new package of pep. That's the easy way you get these comic buttons, you know. You don't have to send in a single penny, not even a box stop. Fact is, you can't buy them anywhere. You just ask Mom to get you a good supply of Kellogg's Pep and look for your exclusive prize inside every package you open. Get busy on your collection of comic buttons from P-E-P Pep, the sunshine cereal made by Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. As Private Detective Candy Myers was waiting in Clark Kent's apartment for the return of his friend, the doorbell rang and two masked men carrying guns entered and ordered Candy to raise his hands. Oh, <laughs> I get it. Kent's getting back at me now for helping to play that April Fool's joke on him. This ain't no joke, Myers. Go on, you even know my name. Take off your mask and put the hardware down. Keep your hands up. Now listen, I said I'm wise. That's what you think. Now look... <laughs> I... What do you know? There's the 20 grand on the table just waiting for us. Grab it, Chuck. Okay. <laughs> Still won't admit it's a gag. Hey, 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 wait. What are you doing with the door? Bye-bye. Hey, no way. Gag or no gag, that door has to stay here. I told Ken I'd watch it. Stay right where you are, Myers. Open the door, Chuck. Wait, I said. You're not going to get out of here with that door. Don't move it. Okay, you asked for it. Oh, oh. Springing forward, Candy Myers' hands are closing around the masked man's arms as a gun fires. The private detective groans and slumps to the floor, where he lies motionless. Our story has taken still another strange twist, fellows and girls. This time, it's not a joke. So be sure to be with us tomorrow, when Kent, Batman, and Robin join forces in a swift attempt to solve still another amazing mystery. Tune in, same time, same station, and follow the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. Superman is also a copyrighted feature published in Superman DC Publications. Say, kids, if you're training your dog, try rewarding him for good behavior with Kellogg's Grow Pup. There's a dog food that makes a hit with most dogs right from the word go. Gives them swell, meaty flavor and gives them three different kinds to pick from. Grow Pup Ribbon, Grow Pup Meal, and Grow Pup Pellets. All full of what it takes to help keep a dog right on the beam to help build strong bones and teeth and muscles. That's why lots of champs feed on Grow Pup. So ask Mother to get Kellogg's Grow Pup for your dog today. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Kellogg's Pep! The Super Delicious Cereal presents the adventures of Superman. Than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman. Strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, defender of law and order. Champion of equal rights. Valiant, courageous fighter against the forces of hate and prejudice who today joins Batman in an effort to find Candy Myers, his private detective friend, who disappeared when a series of practical jokes begun by Lois Lane and Perry White backfired. We'll join them in a moment. But first, here's Dan McCullough, who wants to talk to you about something pleasant to look forward to. You know, gang, a lot of people think it's more fun to anticipate something, you know, to look forward to it, than it is to actually have it. But believe me, that's not true of this new second series of comic buttons you fellows and girls are all collecting from packages of Kellogg's Pet. 
Of course, it is fun to look forward to Mom opening a new package of pap and to wonder, uh, to wondering which iconic button you'll find inside. But it's just as exciting when you get that smart-looking button. Maybe it'll be one from this brand new second series that you need for your collection. Might be the Little King or Uncle Willie or Superman himself. Or maybe it'll be a duplicate that you can swap with one of your friends. That's even more fun, too. And you'll get a real kick out of pinning these brilliant colored buttons on your jacket or your dress or cap and wearing them for all the kids to see how many you've collected. You'll really feel like strutting around, believe me. And you know the best part is, these nifty comic buttons are so easy to get. You don't have to send in a single penny, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. You just ask Mom to get you plenty of that sunny golden toasted cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Inside every package, there's a thrilling prize. That's P-E-P, Pep, the sunshine cereal made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. No, the adventures of Superman. <laughs> Unknown to Clark Kent, who as we know is Superman, what began as an innocent April Fool's joke has developed into something far different. While Kent was turning the tables on Lois Lane, Perry White, and Jimmy Olsen, who started the joke, his friend Candy Myers, the private detective, waited in Kent's apartment with the $20,000 in cash which had been used in the hope. When two masked men armed with revolvers entered the apartment, Candy thought they were involved in the prank. But when they snatched up the money and started to back out, the detective leaped at them. One of the masked men fired, and Candy sank to the floor where he lay motionless. As we continue now, almost an hour has gone by, and Kent, accompanied by Bruce Wayne, in reality the famous Batman, has just stepped out of the elevator and is walking down the hall to his apartment. Listen. Oh, I'd like to have been in that tip cabin tonight, Clark. When White, Lois, and Jimmy walked in and found you waiting for them. <laughs> well, that's something to see, Bruce, I'll tell you. Their eyes almost popped out of their heads. But well, they were good sports about it. They admitted they had it coming to them, and we all took a vow to lay off practical jokes in the future. A good idea. Sometimes they go sour. Oh, sometimes. Too often. Well, here we are. Golly, poor Candy. He's been waiting all evening for me. Oh, waiting here? Uh-huh. Guarding the $20,000. Money, Bruce. Oh, thanks. Now we're back at last, Candy. Sandy, where is he? He probably got sleepy and took a nap in the bedroom. It's almost midnight. I'll wake him. No, don't bother. He's not in the bedroom. He is? Uh-uh. Oh, maybe he got tired waiting and went home. Funny, he promised to stay here till I got back. He wouldn't break his word. And, and where's the $20,000? Well, it must be here someplace. It isn't anywhere in this apartment. Well, how do you know? I... Oh, I always forget that X-ray vision of yours. Well, don't worry about it. Candy may have been called out in the case... Chances are he took the money with him because he didn't want to leave it on guard. Oh, no, no, he would have left a note. Wait, Scott, look. What? Candy's gun and shoulder holster on the couch. He must have been lying down here. See how the couch is all wrinkled? Uh-huh. Well, he took the gun off to be more comfortable. Right. And he wouldn't have gone out on a case without it. Well, he'd go out for a cup of coffee without it, though, wouldn't he? What? Huh? Oh, you mean... Sure, he... he got hungry and went out for a bite. He'll be back soon. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, I suppose that's there. Let's have a look out this window, huh? Well, he isn't in the coffee shop downstairs. He isn't in the drugstore at the corner. Well, maybe... And he isn't in the restaurant on Flower Street. Those are the only places to eat around here. Maybe he decided to walk for a few extra blocks. What? What's the matter with you, Clark? I didn't know you were such a worrier. Well, I'm not ordinarily, but I don't like this. You couldn't make Candy walk an extra block. He started out as a police officer on a beat, and he says his feet still hurt from pounding the pavement. Well, not just the same... Oh, excuse me. Sure. Hello? Is that you, Mr. Kent? Yes, who is that? Jackson. Candy Myers. Oh, it? yes, Jackson. Candy there, Mr. Kent? Why, no. I expected to find him here. Promised to wait till I got home, but evidently he left. Well, that's funny. He told me he'd be at your place tonight. Uh-huh. Something came up a little while ago, and we need him. Oh? I've been calling him for a half hour. Oh, I, I just got in. Did you try his apartment? Yeah, but there's no answer. Huh. Listen, if he calls in, tell him to check with me right away, will you? I'm at the office. Yeah, sure. And if, if you hear from him, have him call me. Okay. Good night, Mr. Kent. Good night, Jackson. Train? What train? One of Candy's men is looking for him. Says he's been calling here for half an hour. So if Candy just went down for a cup of coffee, he should have been back by now. Look, Tom. Candy's a big boy and plenty tough. He can take care of himself. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Just that this isn't like him, but... Uh Uh-oh, what's that? What gives now? Here. Take a look at this. What? What's under the chair? The cartridge chair. Right. Where did it come from? It wasn't here when I left the apartment earlier tonight. Oh, it's from a thirty-eight caliber revolver. And Candy's gun is a Colt forty-five. That means somebody else was here tonight. Someone who fired a gun. No, it is starting to look bad. That's what I've been trying to tell you. It looks like... Oh, 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 oh wait a minute. Yes? 
Oh, I'm beginning to smell a rat. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, oh, I get it. You bet you do. Another practical joke. Oh, you think Candy pulled this himself? Well, it could be. His man calling up just now was pretty suspicious. Why, of course it's a gang. <laughs> and he had us going for a while, too. Yeah, he sure did. I was just about to call Inspector Ham. <laughs> what now? It's not. It isn't a gang. What do you mean? There's no bullet. No bullet? You mean... That... Of course. The bullet from this thirty-eight shell. Where is it? Oh, wait a minute. Relax, relax. It might have been a blank. Uh-uh. There would have been a mark on the shell if it was. And there is no mark. I looked. Well, maybe he shot it out the window. Come on. So, where are you going? The Nielsen, the man in the next apartment, is just coming down the corridor with his dog. He's usually home all evening. Might have heard something. Oh, uh, Mr. Nielsen. Hello. Oh, good evening, Mr. Kent. Good evening. I'm very glad to find you here. Well, I'm glad to find you. Listen, did you happen uh, to... Let me finish, please. First of all, let me say that I have no objections to young men enjoying themselves if they maintain order and quiet, of course. Well, let's... Uh... But I have definite objections to drunken brawls going on within sight and hearing of my apartment. Drunken brawls? Well, please don't try to deny it, Mr. Kent. Well, I... I was disturbed by loud voices and fighting and came out of my apartment to make my objections to you not more than an hour ago. An hour ago. I saw one of your guests, obviously under the influence of alcohol, being helped, or I, I should say carried, from your apartment by two other young men. Uh-oh. The young man. Yeah. The one who was carried. What, what, was he Was he husky and, and, and light-haired? Uh, yes, he was. And, and he was so intoxicated, his eyes were closed. I believe the term is out cold. Yes, sir. Uh, up to now, you've been an admirable neighbor, Mr. Just Kent, a moment. Just I... a moment, please. The other two men. Did you get a good look at them? I did not. No. Oh, uh, they, they were so intoxicated that their hats were tipped down over uh, their eyes. Uh, as I say, up, up to now, you have been qu- uh, quite an think, 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 Mr. Nielsen, this is very important. Didn't you notice anything about the other two men? I wasn't at all interested in them. Oh, I know you weren't interested, but you must have noticed something. Please try to remember. This isn't what you thought it was. I, I, I wasn't home. But unless I'm very wrong, the young fellow you saw, whom you thought was intoxicated, had just been shot by one of the other men. <laughs> Why, yes. Uh, think hard, uh, Mr. Neal. Well, please. Oh, my goodness, I... Uh, well, I, I hardly know what to say. I have a picture of the two men. You say you couldn't see their faces. All right, how about their size? Oh, their clothes. Uh, their, their, their size, their clothes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes, their clothes. Well, uh, well, let me see now. Yes, yes. It seems to me I, I did notice something. You did? What? Well, well, now, let me see now. What was it? I. It, it was something unusual. I, I know it was, but I... Well, I just can't seem to remember now. Now, what was it? I... No, uh, Tensely, almost prayerfully, Clark Kent and Batman lean forward, as if striving by their wills to make Mr. Nielsen remember. We'll return in a moment for the climax of today's episode. But first, here again is your announcer. You know, the other day, one of the gang told me that he always used to wish there were more games that fellows and girls could play together. That's one reason he's so excited about that new second series of comic buttons from packages of Kellogg's Pet. Because girls and fellows get a great kick out of collecting these brilliant, gleaming buttons and wearing them pinned on their jacket or dress or cap. And, of course, there's the fun of exchanging duplicates to add a new comic strip character to your collection. What's more, both fellows and girls in the gang say these comic buttons are just about the smartest-looking things they ever saw. Full, bright colors on a clear, white-enameled metal button with the pictures of your funny sheet favorites standing out like anything. Take that button with Superman on, for instance. Boy, there's our honey. He looks so real he could speak. And as for collecting all 18 buttons in this new second series, why, that's just as easy for girls as it is for boys. And you can't buy them, you know. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. The only way you can get these comic buttons is the easy way, as prizes in packages of Kellogg's Pep. Ask Mom to get you some P-E-P Pep, the sunshine cereal, made by Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. <laughs> Mr. Nielsen, Clark Kent's neighbor, saw Candy Myers being carried from Kent's apartment earlier that night. Now in the corridor outside Kent's door, the man who is really Superman and his friend Batman wait breathlessly as Mr. Nielsen says, I noticed something unusual about one of the two men who was carrying your friend, Mr. Kent. Yes. uh, I can't seem to remember now. Or uh, uh, Wait now. Yes, yes, I do remember. What? What was it? One of them was wearing uh, brown leggings, or or rather puttees. Brown puttees. Did you notice anything else? Why, why, no, I, I can't say that I did. Uh, Clark, come in here. Just a moment, Bruce. Uh, come in here, I said. Uh, thanks, Mr. Nielsen. Uh, uh, you're quite welcome, sir, but I, I do wish you'd tell me that... Uh, What's the idea of dragging me away? He, he might have remembered something else. He told us all he knew, and it might be enough. What do you mean? He just mentioned a, a pair of brown puttees. Now, think. Who wears puttees in Metropolis? Well, I don't know. Chauffeur. Right. right. The drivers of the two big taxi cab fleets wear them. Huh? One of those lads who took candy away was a cab driver. Oh, now, wait a minute. Just because he wore puttees doesn't prove he's a cab driver. Private chauffeurs sometimes wear them, too. The fellow was a cab driver. He had to be. Why? Now, listen. 
Candy, Lois Lane, and I hatched a gag of plenty of the $20,000 in your apartment while we were in a taxi. Now, go ahead. Keep talking. Well, that was yesterday afternoon. And we planned the whole deal in a cab. So? We were pretty hilarious about it. And the driver couldn't help overhearing us. Evidently, he saw a chance to get hold of the money. Well, that's no evidence, Bruce. Someone else might have overheard you. Not a cab driver. What about those actors who were in on the gag? Mrs. Uh, Walsh and the actors I hired. The petits say my hunch is right. Oh, if I only could remember exactly what this fellow looked like. Yeah, I remember he had carroty hair. And I think he had one of those eyebrow mustaches. Lois might remember him. Good idea. Look, look, look. Let's pick her up and go down to headquarters. They have a photograph of every cab driver in the city. Yeah. We ought to be able to find our man. Well, look, there's no sense in both of us covering the same ground. You take that end, Bruce. I'm going to talk to Inspector Henderson and then check on all the actors who are in on the joke. Okay. I'll call Lois from headquarters. Uh, see you later, Clark. All right. Uh, hello, in- Inspector Henderson, please. This is Clark Kent. Yes, Kent of the Daily Planet. Look, I don't care if he has gone home. I know you have a private wire to him, and I've got to talk to him. Desperately, Clark Kent and Batman begin their search for Candy Myers. What has happened to Candy? Monday's episode is full of drama and exciting action, gang, as Superman and Batman battle against desperate odds. So don't miss the smashing climax of our story, the story which began as a joke and developed into grim reality. Tune in, same time, same station, for the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. In the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Fellas and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a counter-added feature, appearing in Superman D.C. publications. Say, if you want your dog to give you the glad eye, try giving him Kellogg's Grow Pup Dog Food at mealtime. There's a dog food that's as good as they come. It's got a swell, meaty flavor that goes over big with most dogs. And there are three kinds of Grow Pup. There's Grow Pup Ribbon, Grow Pup Meal, and Grow Pup Pellet. All good for your dog. Grow Pup has vitamins and minerals, helps build strong muscles and teeth and bones. Just tell that to Mother, and I'm sure she'll want your dog to feed on Kellogg's Grow Pup every day. And be sure to be with us on Monday for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Hello, Pat! The Super Delicious Cereal presents the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from another planet, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, defender of law and order, champion of equal rights, valiant, courageous fighter against the forces of hate and prejudice. Today, Batman and Lois Lane pursue the clue of the taxi driver and run head-on into trouble. We'll join them in a moment, but first... Here's our good friend, Dan McCullough. You know, gang, I was passing the school in our neighborhood this morning, just about recess time, and I met up with a couple of kids who were really going to town collecting that new second series of comic buttons from packages of Kellogg's Pep. They got a swell start on collecting all 18 different buttons. Right then, they were swapping duplicates with each other. One young fella had two Superman buttons, and the other had two of Maggie. Each one needed the button that the other had two of to add to his collection. Yes, sir, it's mighty exciting fun to compare notes with your pals and see who has the most different pet comic buttons. And it's mighty smart to wear all your comic buttons pinned on your jacket or your dress or cap, where they really show off. Actually, you're not in the swing unless you're collecting these thrilling prizes. You're missing out on a load of fun. So better get going on your collection. Ask Mom to get you a good supply of Kellogg's Pets. That's the only way you can get these comic buttons, you know. You can't buy them anywhere, and you don't send in a single penny, not even a box stop. You just look inside the pet package for your exciting prize. Get your comic buttons from P, 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 Pep, the sunshine cereal, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek and Omaha. Now, the adventures of Superman. <laughs> 
What began as an innocent April Fool's joke on Clark Kent has turned into grim reality. In Kent's apartment, private detective Pandy Myers was guarding $20,000 in cash, which had been used in the hoax, when two masked men armed with guns entered. Candy was shot. And when Kent and the famous Batman arrived a short time later, both Candy and the money were missing. A neighbor said he had seen a young man answering Candy's description being carried away by two other men, one of whom wore brown leather puttees. Suspecting that the man wearing the puttees might be a taxi driver, that man left to pick up Lois Lane and make a check of all cab drivers. As we continue now, it is one o'clock in the morning. That man and Lois Lane are in the vehicle bureau at police headquarters examining the photographs of the city's cab drivers. Listen. We must have gone through 200 of these photographs, Batman. I never knew there were so many cab drivers in Metropolis. Yeah, there are 15,000 all told. Good heavens, you mean we have to look through 15,000 photographs? We may find our man before that. You said you remembered what he looked like. Oh, yes, he was thin and wiry with red hair and a little mustache. And his eyebrows were straight. I remember that distinctly. Do you really think he had something to do with Candy's disappearance? My hunch says so. You and Candy and I hatched the idea of planning the $20,000 in Kent's apartment while we were in a taxi cab yesterday afternoon, remember? Yes? Well, one of the men who carried Candy from Kent's apartment was a cab driver. So, hey, wait a minute. What? His photograph. Let's see it. No, no, it's a false alarm. Description says this fellow has black hair on the stand. Also, our driver's head was flatter than that. Ah, your reporter's eye comes in handy. Well, keep going. I certainly wish Robin would help us. He would fit this week to visit a friend. <gasps> Here he is. Uh, our driver? Yes. Look, see the description? Hair and mustache red. Uh-huh. But I'm just ignoring him without the description. You see how his eyebrows go straight across his brow? And how his face hollows in under his cheekbones? Well, I didn't now? notice yesterday, but if you're sure. I'm positive. This is the man who drove us. Okay, let's see. His name is Fred Johnson. But there's no address. And the car said he drives the Metropolis Taxi Company. Come on. Where? The Metropolis Taxi Company, of course. They'll tell us where to find him. Oh. We can cut through the teletype room. Step on him, Miss Lane. My hunch is right. We're on our way. Driver's name is Fred Johnson, you say? That's right. Well, I'll look at our driver's file. It's awfully kind of you. That's all right. See his name, Jackson, Jacobson. Here we are, Fred Johnson. If you'll just give us his address. And tell us whether he's driving his cab tonight. Well, this file will have everything. Now, uh, let me see. He's driving days this week, so he's probably home now. Here's his address, 959 Quarry Road. Let's cross the river. Yes, I know where it is, and thanks very much. Come on, Miss Lane. Yes. Thanks, Lowe. You're welcome. Now well, we can drive to Quarry Road in half an hour. Come on, hop in the car. That little bungalow just ahead must be 959. Doc. Come on, Miss Lane. All right. It's so dark and deserted out here, isn't it? This is practically the end of the city. Now, let's go and try not to make any noise. I want to start around a bit first. Look, Batman, if your hunch works out, we might be in trouble. There are just the two of us, and I'm afraid I wouldn't need much help in a fight. Yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Here's the house. Quiet now. I want to go around to the wood, around to the rear, where that lighted window is. It's so dark. I'm afraid I'll stumble. Oh, hang on to my arm. We've had one break so far. What's that? Mr. Johnson doesn't seem to have a door. Easy, how easy. Here we are. And the window shade isn't quite all the way down. Let's have a look. Look. There's Johnson. And three other rough-looking characters. Oh, oh. look, that man. Quiet, quiet, Miss Lane, quiet. Yes, yeah, but look on the table. I see it. Yeah. Now, come look, the two green and white bands that the money was wrapped in. That's our $20,000, all right. Come on. What are you going to do? can't go in there alone. Now, listen. Candy may be in the house somewhere. I know. We've got to get the police. You go to the phone the house and call them. And now, hey, wait, wait. What's the matter? Listen. What? Hear that? Yes, it sounds like someone's groaning. Cut, man. Maybe it's Candy. That's what I think. I'll see if I can get one of these basement windows open. You go. Oh, oh, oh they heard us. Oh, dear. Who's there like that? Someone's trapped back in the house. Here they come. What do we do? You run into a car. It's you. Never mind about me. Run now. The keys are there. Right to the nearest phone. Not the corner house. Now run. All right, but be careful about it. I hear them. Bye-bye. Into the basement. Candy. Uh, Is that you? Uh, Candy. Oh, I see you. Oh, thank heavens you're alive. Where'd they go? I don't know. Hey. hey. I heard a guy. Oh. Just a second. Get this gag off you. 
take it easy. Now, get these ropes off you in a jiffy. The knot's not very tight. I've been working on a tent, and I thought you'd been shot. Sure I was, but it was just a scalp all night. Hey, look here. This window's open. Better hurry, Joe. They'll be with us in a minute. I'll have you bring another shake. Yeah. Hey, Daisy, turn the basement light on. You hear that, Batman? They turn the light on, we're dead ducks. They've all got guns. So what? There you are. Can you get up? Yeah. Can I? Oh, boy. Hey, the light. There they are. Hit the, hit the ground, Candy. I'll break the bolt. Come on, Chuck. Hank, let's get out. Here they come. There's only three. No, no, there's four of them. Stay in this end of the basement where the light's out. Okay. Come and get us, you rat. Come on. Let's get out of Come on. Yeah. 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 Come on. 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 Well, Mr. Johnson himself, who was going to dump me in the river tonight. Yeah. Let my friends and the cops think I swapped the 20 grand. No, no. Stay away, Batman. This baby is my day. Let go. I'll let go when I change your ugly face. Hey, who's shining the flashlight? On the stairs there. Great Cuban. Okay, Mr. Myers. That'll be all for you. Tell your friend to lift his hand. And you too. But it's same here. You get the bullet. Hey, he's got Lois Lane. Yeah. Go. Stand still, sister. Come on up with your hands, punks. And quick or this gun goes off. I guess he's got us, Batman. I'm afraid so, Kenny. Okay, Fred, get your gun. We'll punish these wise guys. For good. <laughs> Helpless, Batman and Candy stand with arms upraised as the man across the basement, holding Lois Lane by one arm, levels a pistol at them. This looks like the end. But is it? We'll be back in a moment for the exciting climax of our story. But first... Here again is your announcer. You know, a certain young lady registered a complaint with me the other day. Yeah, you know, said I've been neglecting the girls when I talk about that frail new second series of comic buttons that now come in packages of Kellogg's Pet. We have just as much fun as the boys do, she said, wearing those smart-looking buttons on our jacket or dress and collecting all the different comic strip characters. And you know, she's right. Sure, all the gang gets a big kick out of this new second series of pet comic buttons. You know, each one has a true-to-life picture of one of your favorite funny sheep friends, like Andy Gump and, and Popeye and Jiggs and Superman, of course. They're all done up on white enamel, sturdy metal buttons that are so doggone slick-looking that, well, they're really on the beam. And you'll be on the beam, too, when you get going on your collection. So hop to it. Today, ask Mom to get you several packages of Kellogg's Pet, because that's the only way you can get these exclusive prizes. You can't buy them anywhere, and you don't send in a single penny, not even a box stop. You just look inside the pet package for your nifty-looking comic button. There's a prize for you in every package of P-E-P, Pep, the sunshine cereal, made by Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. In the basement of the bungalow, Batman and Candy Myers stand helpless, arms upraised as Fred Johnson, the taxi driver, points his gun at them. And his henchman, 20 feet away, pushes Lois Lane toward Batman and Candy, and then advances with his own gun leveled. Okay, Myers, here's where you get it. No, don't. Shut up, sister. You butt it in, so you're getting it, too. And the guy in the masquerade comes. Now, listen, you can't do this. No good one, No. Candy. What's this, sister? You ready, Harry? Yeah, sure. Then let him have <laughs> Please. Thank you. Looks as if I got here just in time. Superman. Superman. Hiya, Sheriff. Hey, there we are, Johnson. We've got unfinished business. Now let go. I'll let go like this. Oh. Yeah, and I'll take care of this character. Oh, Superman. I thought that... Relax, Miss Lane. It's all over. Come along, mister. Oh, that was a close call, Superman. Many thanks. You're welcome, Batman. And thank you. Well, it looks as if you had the right idea all along. Yes, but I needed your touchdown play. Say, tell me, how'd you trace us here? Oh, I uh, checked with the taxi companies, discovered what you had, and hopped the trolley car out here. Yeah, <laughs> some trolley car. Baby, I was never so glad to see anyone in all my life. And listen, listen, hear me. One and all, the next time Candy Myers gets mixed up in a practical joke, somebody give him a good kick in the pants. Please, <laughs> all right? <laughs> Depends on what suit you're wearing. <laughs> well, all's well that ends well. Even a joke. Right. Except for Mr. Johnson here and his playmates. Uh, they didn't know the joke was over. 
And so another Superman adventure has been brought to a close. And we're quite sure that Candy Myers voiced the sentiments of all his friends when he stated that practical jokes were unhealthy. Gang, tomorrow we're starting a brand new story. A different kind of story. One we honestly believe will be the most exciting adventure Superman has ever taken part in. We promise that you'll thrill to every minute of it. And we urge you to be sure to listen tomorrow. And tell all your friends to listen. When we begin the greatest story of Superman's career. The fight against our country's most powerful menace. A menace worse than atomic bombs. So don't fail to tune in tomorrow, same time, same station, for the further adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman D.C. publication. Say, gang, if you've ever had a race with your dog, you know how much he enjoys running and jumping. Now, dogs are like people. To keep their muscles strong, they have to eat right. So if you want to help your dog to stay in the groove, to have strong bones and teeth and muscles, just mix Kellogg's Grow Pup dog food in with the scraps of meat and fat you give him. There are three kinds of Grow Pup, all with a grand meaty flavor. There's Grow Pup ribbon, Grow Pup meal, and Grow Pup pellets. Ask your mother to feed your dog Kellogg's Grow Pup regularly. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.